It is a day like no other in the cricketing world. Without a run being scored, without a ball being bowled, the lives of cricketers change. The IPL auction is the envy of the T20 franchise cricketing world. We all want to follow it. We all have an inclination towards seeing what happens on auction day. And this is the day that our vocabulary gets enhanced. Auction dynamics is now part of the cricketing lexicon. And with the 10 franchises ahead of what is a reset season, the 2023 edition promises to be just as exciting. This is ESPN Cricket for Auction Day. And we like to keep evolving, keep things changing. So we've got our table set. We don't need the actual table. We don't have hammers and gavels. We don't have those paddles that go up. Wasim Jafar is here, Punjab Kings uh, former batting coach and just back fresh of winning with the Bangladesh Under-19s. Congratulations, Wasim. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you, Rona. Yeah, it's been fantastic. First time ever for Bangladesh. They won the Asia Cup under 19 So, uh, you know, it was really fun to be there. Yeah. I was in Dubai for last 10, 12 Yeah, days. you checked all the auction arrangements are in order, <laughs> I hope, on your way out. Did you meet any of the owners at the airport, maybe? No, no, I, I came a little early. Uh, <laughs> they probably arrived a little later. But yeah, it was good. <laughs> and exciting times. I think the fortunes changed, especially if I can speak for the uncapped players. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's an exciting day in their life. Yeah, uncapped players, uh, there are some uh, th there are some that we can watch out for, Shashank Kishore. You follow domestic cricket more than all of us combined, more than most of those people sitting on the franchise tables combined. Is my bet. Yeah, lots of them. Yeah. Uh, probably in the 2-3 <laughs> yeah. pro price bracket. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to, uh, yeah, life's change. And it's just uh, the Under-19 World Cup season is on as well. A lot of them earlier, the uh, auction has happened after the Under-19 World Cup. So, it's inflated the price many. Yeah. Probably you'll see a correction for the uh, uncapped players this time around. Yeah, yeah, and we, we can't wait to see what comes out of this. We can only predict and anticipate. But my partner in crime is Yash Jha, whose skill set of Rachindran, <laughs> yeah, who could very well end up being one of the surprises of the auction or a high price player of the auction. Take, break it down for us, Jha. The auction begins another 20 minutes from now. How are we starting off again? Just remind us. Yeah, we've got those first five sets of the capped players, which begins with batters. Uh, then you've got the one which you'd expect is the big money one with the all-rounders. The last two times, the all-rounders have come up first and we've seen what those first sets in the last two auctions have been with records breaking. Mm -hmm. That's where the likes of Cummins and Kutse and Hasaranga come in. Uh, set three is wicket keepers. Set four then with fast bowlers of Mitchell Stark, who's supposedly, yeah. uh, we believe, could crack that 20 crore mark, which has never been touched. And then before we move on, on to the uncapped players. Mm, yeah, it's all very exciting, isn't it? And the fact that it is a small auction makes it even more intriguing because there is a lot of money that could be spent absurdly. Uh, fittingly, it's time to go to someone who has never advocated that, but it happens just the same because the most constant retention on ESPN Crick Info, especially on auction day, is Tom Moody, the IPL title winning coach with the Sunrise. He's got a big smile on his face. I never saw him smile at an auction table in all the times that I can remember, but I don't remember having the images uh, to me on what your expressions were like, Tom. How are you doing today ahead of auction day? Well, I'm very relaxed, Ron. I can hello to the team. So it's an exciting day for everyone. Uh, it's an exciting day for the coaches, uh, for the support team that uh, do all the backroom analysis and trying to find those un, sort of those hidden gems. Uh, also, just trying to find that right pick so you sort of round off your team. You know, today's auction uh, is, as we know, it's a small auction. Uh, so it, teams will just identify a couple of key areas they need just to round off their team. Uh, so they are competitive come 2024. Okay, 20 minutes or so until we have the first player that will go under the hammer. And just to give you a nice little build-up, I'm sure you've caught some of it already if you're a regular on our network. But Tom Moody gave us his predictions uh, on the eve of the auction on what to expect today. Let's just have a listen in. Firstly, Steve Smith, I don't think, will get picked up in the auction this year. Secondly, I think Mitchell Stark will break the all-time auction record, which is currently held by Sam Curran at 18.5 crore. I think he'll go beyond that. Yeah, I'm going to give you a few more of those in a second from now, but I'm going to keep count of how many you get right, Tom, in just a second. So let's take the first two that <laughs> he just mentioned. No Steve Smith and Stark to be the IPL's most expensive player. Vasim, hi, Anna, one of your favourite segments on our show. <laughs> hi, Anna, where do you see that going? Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> so start to perhaps go 20 crores. Yeah, are we all saying or is there an anti-climax? Yeah, I, I feel afraid to uh, voice against Tom Moody, uh, having been with him in the studios a bit. But I, I don't know. I don't. For some yeah, reason, I, think, I don't see it happen. I think about 18 is the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. My one was 18.5, that prediction yeah. thing I didn't know before. What did you say in that? I thought he was going for 16.5 to his old franchise, hmm. RCB. But but then again, I realized that RCB don't have the purse that some of the other teams have. So, yeah, yeah probably looking unlikely. Now, in the 10-team small auction, Vaseem, this is also we are learning with the newer dynamic, right? After the new teams were added, we had a big auction. We had one small auction last year, and that's where we saw Sam Curran hmm. get big money. So... This is the likeliest chance of those records being broken or of that 18, 19, 20 crore next year with the market, maybe not see this kind of payday? Yeah, I mm. think uh, in a smaller auction, you've got better chance uh, because teams, you know, go really hard on, on big players if, if somebody is available. So it's a good chance, uh, you know, that barrier can be broken or come close, uh, I would say. Yeah, if you're looking at 20, then you also look at how many people actually have the money to spend. Now, there are some franchises in this that don't even feature with an entire balance purse of 20, the Titans. That looks like an advantage or a strength going into an auction, a small auction with a maximum purse of 38.15 crore for not Hardik Pandya's team. You have to get used to saying that now. For Shubman Gill's team, 34 crore, Sunrisers, Hyderabad, new management, Daniel Vittori, head coach, Aidan Makram's grown in this past year as well. He's currently leading the South African uh, ODI side against India. Kolkata third. Now, Tom Murray did say that they actually are the team he's looking out for. They have the most work to do because they also have a number of slots still to fill, as many as 12 available slots. Chennai Super Kings at 31.4 crore. They tend to always have that one or two uh, those, those says or tells at an auction that you just think are just going to make that team even more uh, formidable. They are the defending champions, of course. Punjab Kings at 29.1. Not bad for a team that has most of its core intact. Vasim will take us through that in a second. Then we look at those that are actually slightly short on cash. Delhi, also similar, around 29, but they've got a fair bit of work. Bangalore at 23, after the Cameron Green trade nicked most of their balance purse away. Mumbai 17.75, after Hardik Pandya's trade in nicked a lot of that purse away. And Rajasthan, 14.5, Lucknow, 13. So, can we simply rule out those last four teams from Stark? Including Bangalore. I know some of you actually said Bangalore might get Stark. Bangalore will go for Stark. Bangalore don't have a bowler. But if I look at that, there's no way that those guys are going to be spending between 16 and 20, which is what we assume Stark will go for today. Yes, I'd expect that Bangalore stay in the race till a 12, 13 crore mark. Hmm. If they can. Although, I mean, even 12-13 feels a bit far-fetched because when we start breaking down their team, we'll point out that they pretty much have to get an entire bowling attack. There's yeah. Mohamed Siraj, Rhys Topley, Asterisk, if he's yeah. fit, and then no one else. No one else. Yeah, and no. Hasaranga let go of, Hazelwood let go of, Harshal Patel let go of. So that's three of your gun bowlers and at the Chinnaswamy Stadium. Cameron Green's come in. Cameron Green doesn't really answer the bowling problems. No, he doesn't. Um, at best, two or three overs uh, on a good day, four overs. But in Chinnaswamy, you need that insurance of a fifth, a sixth, seventh bowler because obviously the conditions are so stacked in favor of the, the batter. So if they have a spin attack to look forward to. They have a base attack that they have to build with the minimal budget. So yeah, they've they've got a massive uh, challenge at hand. I also found it interesting, Tom, that uh, they traded Shabazz Ahmed, a rare skill set at the auction, to your former franchise, the Sunrisers. Now, as we look at that team, the point is, it's the same old story for Bangalore. They've got a formidable batting, even stronger with the acquisition of Cameron Green in a trade. But the bowling, what do they do with the bowling? They've got 23 crore. There are those that are still imagining that they could spend a large chunk of that purse on Mitchell Stark. Can they really? I don't think they can. They can't afford it. Uh, that's what makes the whole green trade a, a real puzzle to me because if you said to me before the green trade, who would you rather have in your playing 11 if you had a choice between green or Stark, I would be 10 times out of 10 be saying uh, Stark because one of the real needs for RCB is to have that high-class impact bowler that can bowl up front and have an impact early but also can secure two overs at the death and help defend, uh, particularly at home, which has been their greatest challenge. So, I think it's fair to say, true to Bangalore's history at auctions, they will spend most of this 23 crore on a couple of batters. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 well, I, I'd hope to think that they might look at the bowlers before their batters, because I think they've got their batting covered. 
Um, but yeah, it, to, to me, uh, there's two teams that have got the hardest job today, and we're talking about one of them. That's RCB and also KKR. In my view, they're the two teams that have got the hardest job uh, in trying to get it right today, because otherwise they're you, you, you're going to be able to shoot holes in their, in their uh, whole squad throughout the whole season, depending on where you play and in what conditions you play in. Yeah, it's a good point. Kolkata Knight Riders is an important team here. Now, they're getting Shreyas Iyer back. In a small auction, to have the most amount of work to do. I wonder if Punjab are in a similar situation when they picked up Karan, or was there, in, in a number of the smaller auctions, I remember them getting a key amount of players. They go in with a big balance per Vaseem, but is that a strength in an auction like this? You have a team like KKR that are in that range. 32 is a decent purse to have, but they have a lot of work to do. Uh, is that an advantage for KKR, or are you seeing this auction can, you know, possibly going horribly wrong for them also? Well, if they don't get the right players, uh, it mm -hmm. can go wrong, uh, because their bowling is really weak, apart from Varun and Sunil Narayan. Their, yeah. their, their fast bowling is, is uh, nothing. I mean, they've got uncapped players. Harshit Rana is probably a starter. But other than that, there's nobody. I mean, Andre Russell seems to be bowling again for the West Indies yeah. in series against England. But I don't know if that's something that gives you a lot of confidence. Will Andre Russell be a four-over or a three-over bowler, yeah. say, 80% of the IPL or 75%? I doubt that, yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll definitely go hard for Stark. Even for Cummins, I would say, uh, if they don't get Stark, possibly that's that's one option. Uh, but they need to fill up uh, that fast bowling slot uh, for sure. Yeah. They, are they going to get Shardul back, though, at cheaper? Um, very unlikely. I mean, they wouldn't have released him otherwise. I think what KKR are veering towards is, uh, you know, punting on their spin lineup. Varun Chakravarti, Suya Sharma, Sunil Narayan. So that's what they're looking at. That's the, uh, with Gautam Gambhir back. And that's a mantra that works so beautifully for them in that 2015 yeah. to 2012 to 2015. Slow, low track, defending 135, 140, and then, you know, uh, coming in. So. I think spin is their strength, pace attack, a lot of work to do. Hmm. Could, could they possibly be interested, or could they be one of the many franchises interested in one of the players to watch out for in addition to Mitchell Stark, who offers a bit of spin too. Uh, Ravindra couldn't have asked for a better World Cup in a better country at a better time, showcasing a better skill set. Young player, bats anywhere other than in the top six. We were surprised as to how good he was at the top of the order. We know of Rachan Ravindra to be a middle-order player in other formats, a uh, gun fielder, and he's good on camera too. So we got Rachan ahead of the auction. The thing about it, it's all sort of external noise, right? Like, I guess people can speculate all they want and people, you know, they're, they're allowed to be excited about, you know, potential players going to the, the team they support. And But that's that sport, right? You know, you're... You know, as, as a kid, I always enjoyed, you know, watching my heroes play for the teams I support, even not even just in cricket, but in terms of, you know, football, basketball, you know, you, you get attached to certain players. And, I, I, you know, I completely understand that and I can see why um, that, that does happen. But I think for me, it's just, you know, whatever whatever happens will happen. Like I've sort of mentioned before, it's um, no real rocket science, I think. Whatever will be, will be. You know, again, that's not under my control. Like... And what, what's important right now is sort of this one-day series in front of me. So, um, you know, I or you know, getting prepared for that and giving to the team in that in my space that way. There's definitely been well, it's felt like it's been quite a sort of heavy diet of cricket. So, I haven't necessarily had the time to reflect as much as I would have liked to, or, or maybe. Um, but every time I do, it's definitely it's been pretty special. The last sort of uh, eight to ten, you know, couple of months, eight ten weeks, couple of months has been unbelievable you know like yeah you dream of moments like that and uh, you know obviously being a, a massive follower of cricket watching sort of the you know my fondest memories watching the, the world cups and uh, to be able to participate in one and uh, contribute to the team is pretty special i think it's something obviously i'll, I'll never forget and uh, never sort of take for granted i'm was very lucky to be in the, in the position i was and i'm um, lucky enough to sort of panned out but I think it's it's definitely surreal. I think if I think about it right now, I, I guess I that's something that you always have a fond memory of, and um, not just in terms of the performances, but everything sort of off the field, being able to hang out with your mates, or you know sharing the crease with Dev, or you know sharing the crease with Kane, and uh, those sort of guys. You know, it's it's uh, for for a young person like me, I guess it's it's all you've really dreamed of. Um, so I mean, looking back on now, it's, it was pre it was pretty cool. It's pretty special um, moment that I'll never really forget.
He's just cool. There's a lot to like about Rachan Ravindra. You can almost see him taking to the IPL like a fish to water. The fact that he has roots over here and he's so good on camera. He's got a long, bright career even after his playing days, perhaps in studio over here. But realistically, Tom, you've spoken of how much of an advantage the World Cup performers will have. And Matt Roller has tried to pour cold water on that uh, by putting the hard facts out and mentioning that Rachin Ravindra averages 16 with bat and 27 with ball across about 50 T20 games. He doesn't quite have the body of work, but he had a great World Cup. Realistically, what would you want to pay Rachin Ravindra? What is his value uh, at this stage of his career at this auction? I think there's a couple of things to consider. He's clearly a very, very good player. Um, we saw him in one format, that's the 50 over format. He did exceptionally well in India. And that's naturally going to sort of, you know, draw attention to him as a as a potential uh, option in the in the auction. I would be very wary of sort of going walking down that path and thinking he's going to solve all my problems and commit uh, whether it be thirty percent, fifty percent, or more of my salary cap to a player that's not proven in this format. The IPL is the hardest by a long stretch uh, in T Twenty cricket to be able to perform. We've seen so many great players come into the IPL and have their difficulties sort of finding their way. They eventually get it, but I wouldn't be spending north of 10 crore for uh, um, for any player for that matter um, that hasn't had a, a body of work behind them that I know that I can bank on being a match winner for me. Yeah, and the other bit uh, which I probably one of us, Tom and Vaseem in particular, is how much does the new rule impact a player like Rachan Ravindra? You can imagine anything pre-2023 where we didn't have the impact sub. This is the kind of player who you're very interested in. Mm. Can bowl a bit, can bat somewhere across the order. But the way we saw the impact rule used in the first season, Vaseem, mm. do you think the potential value of this... I'm trying to refrain from using bits and pieces, but that player... Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> ...reduces? Well, I think he's going to bat uh, one, two, three, uh, possibly. I don't know how many teams have got that spot. Uh, they have the backup uh, options. Uh, and I think he's a good enough bowler to bowl you two, three overs uh, on conditions in April and May. He's a good enough bowler. So I think uh, there are a few teams uh, who will be going hard for him. I feel Sunrisers, uh, possibly one. Uh, Delhi need a, a backup opener. Yeah. So and, and especially playing in Kotla uh, on those conditions, he'll be very handy. Uh, so I feel there will be takers for him, uh, there's no doubt about it. But again, uh, you know, it's something which, which he hasn't tasted. I mean, he hasn't performed, he hasn't played in IPL. We haven't seen him in, in this saw what with Harry Brook last year, didn't we? Yeah. Right? Big player on the international circuit, but yeah. big price tag and just didn't yeah. quite that, find that's the... What I, that's the only question mark for me. Mm. Uh, GT is perhaps someone I'm looking at who could be interested in Rachan Ravindra. I don't know if Kane Williamson is a viable option at the top. Uh, between Shubman and Ridhiman, Shubman will obviously be there, but Ridhiman Saha, they've lost Hardik Pandey, they need some sort of all-rounder. I'm actually fancying GT to perhaps go for him, but... They'll, they'll have Sai Sudarshan to open as well. Sai Sudarshan yeah, can open, Sai that's Sudarshan good point. or Kane Williamson, they could bat one, two, uh, two and three, uh, either way. But yeah, you need a backup for Ridhiman Saha as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you can't guarantee Ridhiman Saha going to open and he hasn't played much of a cricket. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see if they actually go for those skill sets that there's a question mark on Saha, Matthew Wade, are still relevant players. Matthew Wade has just led an Australian T20i side. Could they be interested in Josh English? Could they be interested in that that skill set that doesn't go for a lot? But when does Rachan Ravindra come in? And who is he come? Who is he with? Let's have a look at that, right? Set. Who is he coming with? Set two all-rounders, which has Gerald Coates here, which mm. has Pat Cummins, which has one Indu Hasaranga, Daryl Mitchell, Patel. and then two strong Indians in Shardul Thakur and Harshal Patel. Mm. So, Shardul found his way in the set, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a smart man. He's gotten to the all-rounder set. Does that help or hamper uh, Rachan Ravindra's case? No, because we've seen the timing of when you come out is important, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think he'll still get two bids. It's not like he's going to go unsold. Uh, three teams at least will look for him, especially on the slow, low wickets. Lucknow is one team that can fancy him because, I mean, they have the opener set now with Devdutt Particles acquisition, but probably uh, look for someone in number three in, in place of Kyle Mayers, for example. On surfaces, that suits spin. Yeah. And with Rachan Ravindra, yes, he plays in New Zealand in seeming conditions, but he's also played like three or four months in a year, every year in India for the last five years. 
across different pitches. I mean, even before the World Cup, mm. he was in a part of a conditioning camp for three weeks in Hyderabad, in Anantapur, in the deep interior districts where they, they get the facilities and the wickets that they ask for. So he's got the uh, advantage of knowing the conditions well. And I think he'll be one of those players who will adapt quicker than probably some other uh, foreign players coming into sure. India for the first time, like Harry Brook did last year. Yeah, we look at the Lucknow squad and, you know, we're not talking a lot about Lucknow. We're talking about teams like uh, KKR or GT and SRH because of their purses and the work they have to do. We're also talking about RCB and MI because of the high-profile trades that uh, they both were part of before the auction. They don't, they don't, they're not spoken of, Tom, but that looks like a damn good team, doesn't it? They've got Devdat Padikal in the form of a trade. There's still Decock and Puran and Stoinis and Kyle Mears, Mark Wood, Naveen Ulhak. There's still a lot to like about this team, even though Avesh Khan has gone the other way and we're all perhaps wondering what role will KL Rahul play? Is he going to remain uh, an opening batter, top order batter? But Lucknow we're not speaking of because that's already a good team. I think they're pretty well sort, sorted, aren't they? I think they, they got what they wanted during the trade window. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming that uh, K.O. Rahul will stay at the top of the order. I think what they do need to do is uh, identify an overseas pace bowler. Uh, there's no guarantee on Mark Wood. Um, you know, he's had his injuries in the past. He's also just recently signed a long-term contract with the ECB, so that also could provide uh, a bit of a challenge. So I think they'll be uh, trying to identify one of the cheaper... Uh, fast bowling options, not your Cummins or your Starks uh, or your Lockie Ferguson's who might fetch, you know, a little bit more than uh, what their purse is going to enable them to, to secure. So it's sort of more like the Jai Richardson type uh, fast bowler, maybe Saudi, um, those type of um, bowlers that will come in around about two, three, four crore. Yeah, let's carry on the conversation. With Yash mentioned those names, which Rachin Ravindra is going to come in with the all-rounders in set two. Uh, there's also Asmatullah Omarzai there. There's Daryl Mitchell there too, who I don't know if you could look at him as an all-rounder, but he's done his chances no harm with the form he showed in the World Cup term. But you got Panindu Hasranga there. I wonder what the interest will be of Hasranga. Sri Lanka cricket confirming that he will be available for the entire IPL and. Uh, unlike previous editions, no tr no problem with his international commitments. Uh, there's Harshal Patel there as well. Uh, and uh, you also have Pat Cummins and Gerald Kutsir. Now, if you look at all those names, does that in any way affect what Rachin Ravindra would go for? How do you see that set playing out? It's a very important set, isn't it? it it's an extremely important set. And I think a lot of the purse is going to be eaten up uh, during that set. Uh, what you don't want to be is the first person or the second person come out in that <laughs> set because you then uh, are left in a position where you might have two or three uh, teams, if not more, that are identifying about three players to secure in that set. And, they don't, and you might be the third most important uh, out of those three players and they don't want to spend their purse or overspend their purse. So the, the way that the players come out in those sets is absolutely critical with regards to, uh, you know, someone's fortunes. All right. Well, we've also got uh, the entire uh, team at work today, as it takes to have a good auction. And uh, Karthik Ayer is going to bring out the first player from the hat. Now, fans are such an important part of this. We've got some very special fans that will be part of our coverage right through the day here on ESPN Rigan for Auction Day. So let's head over to Karthik. Karthik, what have you got for us, man? So we're at the Meta offices, and Mihir, 13 years ago, you did something, something for the Mumbai Indians. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, my name's Mihir Joshi. I've been in the music business for the last uh, two decades, and my way of showing love for a team that I love was through music. So 13 years ago, uh, I'd actually written a song called the Mumbai Indian Song, not official, uh, officially a Mumbai Indian song, but a song that I wrote uh, just to show my fandom. And this was still when Sachin Tendulkar was playing, and I've been a huge Sachin Tendulkar fan. In fact, even in my band's debut album, mm -hmm. there was a song which was a small tribute from me and an entire generation of men who watch cricket imagining that, okay, Sachin Tendulkar is going to do well today. And you'd switch off the TV the moment Sachin would get out. Why is it that I remember a line from that song? I think it goes like, Malinga, you're a loaded gun. This was around 2010, 10, yeah. 11? Yes. Yeah, so, so, you know, the, the, the first paragraph, the first verse itself was the team's name. So, it was... Pola, Jaisurya, Ardhavan, Zahir, Bravo, Harbhajan, Malinga is going to get it done. 
he's like a loaded gun such uh, something like I that i think you you, you you too you need a uh, yeah, uh, it's been 13 years it's not like i've been singing it every day <laughs> but yeah so something about malinga and then the next line itself was sachin he's number one so you know so where can people find it uh, you can find it on youtube and on all streaming platforms uh, it's not something that i would still want to uh, you know make people hear because there's new music coming out and there's an entire album of blues and rock and roll songs called the mumbai blues but mumbai has always been a part of my dna my debut mm. album like i said was called mumbai blues and uh, when the steam was announced from year 1 I was instantly hooked on. I was a fan. Uh, while I may not be the biggest cricket fan, I'm a huge Mumbai fan. And a team that represents Mumbai, man, I had to follow it and I had to support it. So it, it's been it's been awesome watching the Mumbai Indians win trophies and everything. And I'm excited about uh, this season. Yeah. So this is Mihir. He's part of the Paltan. Back. Thanks, Karthik. Thanks, Mihir. Yeah. You know what? That was I was remembering that song as he was saying it. I can actually recall. So there is. That's a pretty good song, and uh, maybe he'll have reason to string a few more. Although right now, if you're a Mumbai Indians fan, uh, you're not really singing the songs of happiness and joy. If you're following what's going on uh, on social media with regards to <coughs> the Paltan, perhaps split down the middle with the key decisions that the franchise has taken, one of the most followed and. Uh, you could say the expectations are higher for the Mumbai Indians than they are for anybody else with CSK perhaps in the same category. So we will see how things go. In a few minutes from now, we will have the commencement of the auction. Let's just wrap up a few things that happened in the last 24 hours too. That was just uh, stories and news points confirmed. One of the things was I found very interesting. Maybe it'll be a quiet thing, Wasi, but two bouncers in have been allowed now in the IPL. Jayadev Unatkar speaking to uh, ESPN to enforcing that is such an important thing you know suddenly this the, the dynamic could change in the games itself is that at all going to affect what a fast bowler a certain type of fast bowler may be at this option i think so i think it will help uh, you know somebody bowling at 140 plus clicks uh, they'll definitely use it uh, on a ground which is bigger in size somebody like lucknow yeah. maybe even mohali or or even other grounds uh, which are little even ahmedabad for that matter mm. Uh, they can use it, even the slower bouncer can be used, uh, you know, especially against the Indian uncapped players who are not used to that pace, 145, 150, somebody like Mark Wood, Mitchell Stark, yeah. they'll definitely use it against the Indian uncapped addition uh, for the fast bowlers. Yeah, we've got Lockie Ferguson in this, you've got Gerald Kutz here, so even if you're not looking at the, yeah. uh, the, the first list of players that come to mind, there are a number of fast bowlers that could be of interest. Tom, your reaction? Two bounces, significant, not significant, doesn't matter, matters? I like it. I think it does matter. Uh, it just stops uh, the players that you just get set in one position by clearing that, if they're a right-hander, clearing that left leg and getting a strong base deep into the crease just to, to, to bomb it you know, out the ground and they're expecting either a length ball or a full ball. And rarely uh, the short ball is used or it has been used early in the over. So... What it will do, it will just keep the you know the batters on notice constantly because knowing that you know there is a number of different lengths that the ball can come, and it will definitely suit the guys that can you know get it up uh, above 145 plus. Okay, we wait and find out. But that's a bit of news that you, with all that was happening on the auction, I hope you didn't miss. Another bit of news, Shashank, that we uh, we'd like to share with our viewers is something that's been done to incentivize uncapped Indian players. Take us through that. Yeah, so someone like Rajat Patidar, for example, uh, was picked up at base price, uh, 20 lakh by RCB two years ago. Uh, he's now on the fringes of the Indian team. He's on tour in South Africa mm -hmm. now. So if he gets capped and he plays up to five games before the IPL, his autom his contract will automatically be elevated to 50 crore. 50 lakh. 50 lakh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and if he plays between five and se uh, ten games, it goes to uh, so 75 lakh. Right. Right. And more than ten games is one crore. So... I think you already have Jitesh Sharma, who's fallen in that category, was picked mm. up at base price. Punjab Kings, he's played in the uh, T20Is against Australia, played the Asian Games, now is on tour in South Africa. So if he plays more than five games, he sees his contract fee already more than just doubled. So that's a good incentive to have for the yeah. domestic players, uh, especially those who go on to play for India between the two seasons. So uh, that's a good rule that they've brought in this time around. Yeah, brilliant. That's nice to see. And it doesn't affect the purse of the franchise. Yeah, it doesn't affect the yeah. purse. Uh, probably the only time it'll affect the teams is when they look to release and retain ahead of the next auction where they want to, if they see them going for a bigger amount of money, then you know that could be a decision to make at that time. Yeah, and of course, teams never otherwise pay players outside of what is 
their amount on the contract and on the on the franchise. There's never anything given on the other side. This is legitimately allowed, right? So no conspiracies here, okay? And don't you dare entertain any of them on ESPN Crick and for Auction Day. I will not allow for it. Uh, ja, we're almost set. So we've got Harry Brook in set one. Who else do we have there? Travis Head's there, isn't he? He could be of interest today. Yeah, you've got yeah. Stephen Smith in there. You've got Travis Head, uh, Rovman Powell. That completes the overseas. Uh, that's Riley Russo as well. Mm -hmm. Russo and Powell both let go of by Delhi uh, ahead of this auction. And we've got uh, two Indian batters there. The only two uh, capped batters, yeah. Indian batters, in Manish Pandey and Karun Nair. And... Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see if uh, Manish Pandey Karun Nair get interest initially, come back later on. We have about ten uh, sets that we'll get through before there is an accelerated round. Now the auction is almost here. Let me just run through what the ESPN Trick Info team predicted ahead of the auction because uh, today someone's going to feel very good about their predictions and a lot of others aren't. It's got to be Mitchell Stark, and I'll guess the price will be 21 crore. I'm going Pat Cummins at 17 crore. I think it's going to be Travis Head after his performances in the semi-final and the final at the World Cup. And I think he's going to go for something along the lines of 15 crore. Mitchell Stark, I know it's an obvious answer, 18.5 level with Sam Curry. I'm going to pick out two, um, and that's Dilshan Marashanka and Gerald Kotsia, uh, two young emerging fast bowlers. I think there's going to be a high demand for pace bowlers. Gerald Kotsia, won by Mumbai Indians for 10 crore. Uh, Daryl Mitchell, the New Zealand all-rounder. I'll go with Harshal Patel. Surprising because you'd think he's tapered off a little and not been in the reckoning, uh, let go off by RCB, but lots of teams need Indian pace bowlers. South Africa's General Coach. Harry Brook. I think this season he could go for a lower price but still be very good in the IPL. It's going to be between Afghanistan's Ibrahim Zadran or South Africa's Riza Hendricks. New Zealand's Daryl Mitchell or Afghanistan's Azmatullah Omar Zai. Christian Stubbs. I think he'll be worth a lot more than what any side would pay for him. Daryl Mitchell won't be sold for as much as he's worth. To Bray Shamsi from South Africa. I'm going to say Rovman Powell, who may not have the attraction from franchises because of his challenges previously with Delhi, but he's a much improved player. The T20 air captain for the West Indies gets picked up at a budget, will actually have an impact. Manish Pandey, I think he will fit in perfectly as a replacement for uh, someone like Raidu at CSK and for him to have a great season. I hate to say it because he's a fellow countryman, but I think Steve Smith is going to go unsold. Steve Smith. Steve Smith. Steven Smith. Steve Smith. Sunrisers Hyderabad will buy Rachin Ravindra. His dad played a little bit of club cricket in Karnataka, so I think it would only be fair if he went to RCB. If Gujarat Titans don't get stuck, I think they'll get Rachin Ravindra because they need some firepower in that top order with Kate Williamson's T20 form quite untested for a while. SRH. But here's a hot take. I don't think there'll be a bidding war for Rachin Ravindra as many have been predicting. I think eventually he'll end up at the Titans. Uh, Delhi Capitals, I think they need someone in the middle order and it's looking a little shaky at the moment. He can also open the batting with Shaw coming back from injury. So he'll sit right well there the, on the Kotla pitch with his bowling and also with his batting. CSK might win the race. KKR, they need a fast bowler and they'll break the bank for him. I think the Delhi Capitals will be the team that will want to get their hands on Mitchell Stark. Gujarat Titans, Arthi Pandya is not there to bowl pace anymore and they need a backup overseas bowler for Josh Little. I think CSK and SRH are going to be the last two bidders for Stark and eventually he's going to go to the Super Kings. R C B. <laughs> yeah, we've we've gone through some of those points already, and now that it's getting closer and closer, some of us are feeling like, what did we say? Why did we say that? You know, that's the kind of feeling we've got, right? Uh, official 
Proceedings are already underway in Dubai. The auction for the IPL 2024 is soon going to be upon us. A touch of history tied with it as well, as the excellent Malika Sagar will become the tournament's first female auctioneer. So we look forward to what could be a serious amount of headline-making, money-making in the first couple of sets too. Uh, just as we run through the purses, to keep in mind, 38.15 Gujarat, Hyderabad 34, Kolkata 32, and Chennai 31. That's four teams in excess of 30. Punjab following with 29, but they don't have a lot of work to do, so that's a good advantage to have. Delhi have some work to do, they're in a similar space. And how good is it to see Rishabh Pant at the auction table? We are all eagerly awaiting the return of Pant, which could very well be at uh, the IPL. Who knows, maybe even uh, sooner if uh, his uh, fitness boxes and his rehabilitation is in order. And uh, Bangalore, Mumbai, Rajasthan, Lucknow wrap it up. Pant present at the auction. Nice for the fans, nice for Indian cricket, world cricket. He's at the auction table today, Wasim. Yeah, I think it's nice. Nice to see him. Mm. Uh, uh, everybody's looking forward to him to take part in the IPL. We, are, we all are missing him. Uh, and it's, it's exciting, him being the captain. I don't know if he'll captain this season. Uh, he might just bat and, you know, take that advantage of, of the uh, impact, impact player. player. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's, it's exciting, uh, you know, to get hands-on about the IPL. Yeah, he clearly also shows his position in the franchise, right? He may or may not captain, he may or may not keep, he may or may not play the whole season. You're willing to let go of perhaps even another season of Pant with the uncertainty because you know this is the face of the franchise for perhaps seven, eight, ten years if he stays fit. Yeah, and he could go the Kohli way, right? Playing just for the one one team right through his career. So he started with DC and yeah, he's in a leadership position now. Ricky Ponting has been in touch with him right through the World Cup. We saw so many uh, glimpses of him chatting with uh, Rishabh Pant when he was in Bangalore uh, during the World Cup matches on commentary where Rishabh has been here for the last eight months. So, yeah, big uh, position for yeah. Rishabh to be there at the auction table and, yeah. I'm trying to just recap. You guys can help me here. How many captains have been present at an auction table? I know that I think MS in one of the earlier seasons was at an auction table. I could be wrong, though, very <laughs> early on. Uh, I I think uh, Shikhar Dhawan at the time has been present when he wasn't really Gotham, being called. Gotham, Gotham was there. Daniel Vittori was there when RCB came. Vittori was captain. there, all right. Yeah, that's a good one, too. I wonder if R. Ashwin was also present at a time where he was leading either Punjab um, uh, or... Could be Punjab. Yeah, could, yeah, possibly. But, Tom, the question asks itself, is it a benefit to have the captain at the table or does it add to the voices? Um, I, I think it's nice to have the captain there, but what's the most important thing at an auction table is that everyone has a clear role, uh, and that applies when there's no pressure and when there's enormous amount of pressure. There, the role clarity around, okay, we've got our strategy, we've got mapped out exactly how we want to go about this auction. We don't suddenly change that strategy under pressure, and you don't have other people coming in and and overriding what you've set up from a structure point of view, decision-making point of view. Um, and that is the challenge that most tables have, is that emotion, uh, you know, kicks in and suddenly you don't want to see another franchise get a particular player that you're keen to get. So you go 10%, 20% over budget, and then that then throws your whole auction uh, to pieces. Mm. All right. Well, keep an eye out. Uh, conversation on the table what that leads to in terms of bidding. Uh, but yeah, uh, as we are almost set, what have you got for us, Jha? Yeah, they'd want so much uh, of that information of how fit he is. I mean, we still don't have confirmation of, you know, if Pant comes, what version of Pant, can he keep, can he not? Mm. Uh, some, some murmurs around that he may play only as a batter, and that affects Delhi's auction so much, because if you look at that squad, there's only Pant and Abhishek Porel, as wicket keepers, mm, yeah, then you start yeah. looking for a wicket keeper. There aren't too many domestic wicket keepers. If you look for an overseas keeper, how do you balance so many overseas batters and what happens to your bowling attack? So mm. that 29 crore you feel Wasim will have to be spent very shrewdly given the makeup of Delhi squad right now. Yeah, and on top of that, the wicket they play there, it's a very tricky one. Uh, they let go of Phil Salt, uh, another keeper. Uh, so they have to look out for, for that uh, part as well. And. Uh, uh, like we mentioned, uh, you know, they have to fill in a few important uh, spots uh, and they've got Saurav there, who's, who's, a, who's taking keen interest, so it'll be interesting to watch. Yeah, yeah, he was there at the WPL auction as well. And the keepers, of course, come in in set number three, so that'll be interesting to see, because set number four is 
the one with the fast bowlers, which has Mitchell Stark to right, it's already underway. So now we just we sit back, we wait, we anticipate, we also predict, speculate, do all the things that auction day tends to pick up. Now we tend to say that coming up first in the auction is sometimes a huge disadvantage, according to your payday. The West Indian T20 captain has come up first. Uh, Rovman Powell is uh, up there. So let's just have a look at those batters that uh, that he's competing with. There's Travis Head in this. Watch out for Travis Head. There's Harry Brook released for an excess of 13 crore. Uh, you also have the two Indian batters in Karun Nair and Manish Pandey in this. Steve Smith, we'll wait and see if there is indeed interest. It seems unanimous across... Our, uh, our our board of correspondence that you will not get you will not get uh, a Steve Smith a bid and Rajasthan and KKR are both interested in Rovman Powell so let's think of these franchises Rajasthan let go of Jason Holder KKR have Andre Russell there in the middle there's also room now Rovman Powell is primarily a batter who mm. can chip in with the odd overs but Delhi never used that skill set there is interest in Rovman Powell and Rajasthan KKR have kicked it off Wasim yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised KKR going for it. Again, mm. we talked about their bowling being so light uh, and their batting is sorted till till number seven. So I'm surprised uh, you know, they're going so hard at, at, at the start of the auction. What's the reputation for Rovman Powell, Tom Moody? Is it, oh, we've seen him in the IPL and uh, it's not quite to his liking. He's vulnerable against spin or is it a no, dangerous player perhaps didn't find the love he that you need to give a player like him at uh, at Delhi and a different franchise, maybe he'll be a match winner. And I did mention, of course, he is the T20A captain and seems to be vastly uh, comfortable in that leadership role for the West Indies. Yeah, he does. He does certainly uh, enjoy the leadership, um, whether it be for the West Indies or he's also captain uh, successfully in the, uh, the CPL. Um, I, I was surprised that uh, Delhi Capitals released him, to be honest with you, because he is one of those few players that can come in at number five, six and turn a game on its head because of his sheer power. Yes, there's been question marks over his ability against spin, but I think he's, you know, vastly improved in that particular era um, where he seems to be able to manage and navigate that a lot better than he did earlier. I think last year um, or last season in the IPL, a number of the batters in that Delhi Capitals lineup really didn't have a chance to you know, grab the opportunity with both hands because they were so uncertain with what balance they needed to be successful. There's a there's a double tie-up there as well with uh, Tom points out he's captained well in the CPL. Which team is that? It's the Barbados Royals. Mm. So there's a tie in there. And you look at that Rajasthan Royals squad and where have we felt they've struggled in the last two years? They've, they've just... They've had five specialist batters, five specialist bowlers, and then... They have struggled for finishers. Dhruv Jurel showed some promise, but he's still very new. But Robin Powell allows you someone who you can trust at five and six. And even though they do get the sixth bowler usually as an impact sub, at least you have one of your batting options who does give you a few overs. One of the things, I mean, uh, it's no surprise, as he said, uh, two sides that have footprint in the CPL going after Robin Powell. The one thing that Rajasthan Royals have is a gun all-India attack. They've got Ashwin, they've got Chahal, they've got four Indian fast bowlers. So they can focus really on the batters and the all-rounders. So not really surprising to see them go after uh, Roman Powell. So, yeah. The bid in that conversation, which is, of course, wonderful that we remember that these are two teams invested overseas in the CPL uh, and they do have interests of perhaps building some form of, uh, of team across one league to the next. It's already in excess of five and a half crore. So this is a payday now for the West Indies T20 captain. I couldn't be happier for him. He's a wonderful story, Rovman Powell. Ian Bishop has told that story many times uh, on our uh, network too. And it, it, you can listen to it over and over again. He comes from a very humble background. He's made his way up to leading the West Indies international side at a time where West Indies cricket is seriously under pressure too. They uh, managed to record a series win against India, which is never easy. Hardik Pandya led in that team in the Caribbean. And I saw Rovman Powell closely be an extremely astute captain and, and leader in that. So that's very interesting to see. But at five and a half crore or six crore, let's just remind ourselves of the purse that both uh, uh, KKR and uh, Rajasthan Royals have. KKR, of course, one of the four franchises in excess of 30 crore that they can spend on. But they have a lot of positions to fill too. They've got 12 positions to fill, right? So they're willing to go five for Rovman Powell. They still have... We've been sitting here thinking they need to spend big on the fast bowlers because they don't have that. Mm. And you're potentially seeing 
six, seven out of the 32, yeah, 33 I, I think the right point made that maybe spin is the way to go. They're not going to go crazy with the fast bowling. And Gautam Gambhir is constantly in the ear of Venki Mysore, who I'm sure will also be watching the show from the beginning once the uh, once the auction has come to an end. But the bid is, uh, I wonder if it's come to a close. I'll just confirm that yeah. in a second. We are ahead of seven crore now. Seven crore seven plus. Tom crore. Modi, please make sense. Seven crore plus for the first player out of the hat at the auction. I, I can't make sense of that because normally it's it's a bit of a death wish being the first to be taken uh, in uh, the auction. I remember uh, Shikha Darwin one year getting picked out as a as the very first player, um, and uh, Sunrise's right to match that final bid, uh, which was around about five and a half crore. So for Shikha Darwin, that was probably well below what his true value was in the auction. So sometimes it can be a curse, but clearly for Rothman Bauer. The stars have aligned and he's got the perfect day. 2.8 crore is what Delhi Capitals had Rovman Powell on for the number of years that they did in the range of seven now. He's already a player that will enjoy a better payday than Ruturaj Gaikwad, than Prithvi Shaw at 7.5. I think it's still growing. So he's now getting into a league where you look at the elite players or the key players in your team. Remember, it is no player's fault what they go for at an auction. It is dictated entirely by dynamics. Sometimes it's even uh, immune to uh, the rationality that we can, the current form, the age, all those things. But two franchises, both want Rovman Powell. That is just elevating his bidding. We yes. have a sale, Pranak. We have the first sale confirmed. 7.4 crore is where it finally finished, and it is Rajasthan Royals who have bagged Robman Powell. OK, let's try and visualize this. Look at the Rajasthan team, 7.4 crore. They already have Shimron Hetmeyer, who plays a similar sort of role. Robman Powell likes to come in at number 5, 6 and finish games off. He is a leadership option, but Samson is pretty much their undisputed leader. They also have Josh Butler, England's white ball captain, very much there, an underwhelming season last time. So you're thinking of Butler, you're thinking of Bolt, and you're thinking of, uh, of Hetmeyer already. They didn't quite know what to do with an overseas last time, as I recall, Shashank. And that's why Obed McCoy was a bit of a, a messed up impact player in one game against the Sunrisers. Number of the other games, too, they were struggling to figure out who their fourth overseas is. Rovman Powell in that team. Like it? Yeah, I mean, uh, surprising that they went uh, up to seven and more for uh, Rovman Powell because they've got Hetmai. They've also got Donovan Ferreira, mm. uh, who Irfan Patan spoke very highly about having played together with him in the T10 league and he can hit big sixes. So, um, I, I, I don't know how they're going to fit him into the first 11, but and I think they've overpaid uh, to get him. He's a good acquisition, no doubt, but I think at 7.4 crores, I think, you know, he's laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah. I don't know if he's even awake at this time in the Caribbean, so, yeah, when he wakes up, he's going to wake up to a truckload of uh, messages and WhatsApp calls and all that. By now, someone is barging into his door and waking him up. <laughs> at least some of his close friends certainly are. Vasim, they had a 14.5 balance purse. Hmm. It's now seven, half that per spent on Robman Powell. You, your reaction? I think they needed somebody at, at five and six. Uh, uh, like Shashank said, they had Donovan Ferreira, but I don't know if they trust him to, you know, play in this condition. Uh, they can have Josh Butler, they can have Hetmeyer, they can have Bolt and they can have Robman Powell. Those are probably the four starters, in my opinion. I think it's a good buy, a little obviously overpriced, uh, but I think it's a good buy for, for Royals. Tom Moody, 7.4 crore to the Royals. We mentioned the overseas players. Uh, your reaction? Uh, I think it's overpaid. Um, I think it's a good fifth, but I think that's 7.4 crore. I think um, Rajasthan will look back in the auction and look at other players with skim similar skill sets that they could have got at base price. Uh, look, he's a dynamic player, but to me, I wouldn't have certainly gone that hard when I only had 14.5 crore at the beginning of the auction. Mm, all right. Well, the auction is very much underway. I remember Robin Powell's perhaps his best game came against the Rajasthan Royals, against Robert McCoy in a game that turned out to be high on uh, tension when Praveen Amari had to walk onto the field and took a ban as a result of it. Rishabh Pant was livid at a non-no-ball call. That was perhaps one of those days that we remember because of uh, the, the craziness of the game. And now Robman Powell will see himself uh, uh, in Rajasthan Royals colour. So big payday, 7.4 crore. That's the first buy at this year's auction. We will be coming to Harry Brook as well now as he's popped up to see what Brook's price is, whether it's affected by what happened in, um, uh, what happened, uh, in last year's IPL with 
the sunrise was at about, I stayed this year, we're still in December, remember. So let's just have a look at uh, some of those uh, remaining pursuers. Let's have a look at those squads too. Uh, Rajasthan Royals. Rajasthan Royals is an important team. They've picked up Rovman Powell.
Well, on ESPN Dragon for auction day, we are going to be with you right through the day as the IPL franchises bid and complete their squads. And Rovman Powell, already a surprise. What can this day give us? It started in the form of what we think is a slightly overpriced buy, but an excellent player nonetheless. And Rovman Powell goes to Rajasthan for 7.4 crore. The franchise that let go of him, the Delhi Capitals, have picked up the next player to uh, get a bid and get a sale at the auction, Harry Brook. Big money signing for the Sunrisers has now gone to the Capitals at four crore. I, I think it's four, right? Yeah. That's confirming. Yeah, four crore for Harry Brook. They released Riley Russo, who also went unsold in between those two players, and they released Rovman Powell. And now Harry Brook has come in for less than what both those two players were worth. So let's get a reaction on that. Harry Brook, Tom Moody, four crore to Delhi Capitals. I think that's a great player. Uh, he's a terrific player. He's potentially a um, a career player at a, at a franchise if you're prepared to, um, you know, hold on to an overseas player at the big auction. Um, or you may have the ability to write to, write to match that uh, that player in that big auction. But, you know, he's, you know, that's to me is a bargain at full crore. I thought he was definitely overpaid last year, but he's a, he's a he's sort of a generational type player. Hmm, all right, so Harry Brook goes there. Let's get more reactions as Travis Head has entered the bidding and the two franchises that have uh, some intense rivalry, SRH and CSK, are at the bid. So we'll come back to that once I think this bid will go on for a while. But Brook going to Delhi, that's very interesting, especially looking at the overseas options they have. Mitch Marsh, we mentioned, could very well have a big role to play in the T20 World Cup. That's immediately after the IPL. They've got David Warner there, Andrik Nokia and Lungin Giri, both of whom have fitness concerns surrounding them. Harry Brook, Shashank. Yeah, it's a formidable uh, top five if you see if the first 11 David Warner opens with Prithvi Shaw. You've got Mitchell Marsh at number three. If Rishabh Pant plays at four and then Harry Brook at five. So that's a strong top five. Uh, but I think Delhi will still need to address their lower middle order concerns, especially with their Indian players. So, uh, but at four crores, I think he's a very good buy. Uh, again, remains to be seen the kind of role he'll play. You'd think he'd start in the middle order. But again, uh, if they've got some injury concerns with Prithvi Shaw, you also have the option of pushing him up the order. So, at four crores, a very, very good buy. Was he? Yeah, I think it's a good buy. Uh, they needed somebody at five or six. That's where uh, he's playing. He's won a game for, for England recently, batting at lower down the order. So, I think uh, he's a good buy, very cheap buy as well. Mm. All right. Uh, and as we speak of Harry Brook, what has Travis Head gone up to? Yes. Is beyond the five and a half crore mark, five point six mm. between Chennai and Sunrisers Hyderabad. Uh, I wonder what you make of Chennai going that heavy. For yeah, Travis Head. yeah. What's... Yeah, I'm surprised as well because they've got Rutaraj Conway really sorted. They're probably going for a backup opener. Mm. Uh, interesting. Then, He's got an Ben Stokes' well. role or Moin Ali's role. Moin Ali Moin does Ali. the same skill as well. Yeah, I think Moin Ali's. 37, 38. So potentially, this is an opportunity. That's for young them. for Super Kings standards. <laughs> Come on. Potentially, a chance for them to see how he goes in one season and then out of the mega auction. You know, you always have the option to release him and then pick him up again. So I think that could be a line of thinking. I mean, you can't say really. But uh, Ali bats at four and five, yeah. and Travis has to bat top of the order. So they've got Ritu mm. and Conway. So I don't know where they're going to yeah. fit. Very interesting. He's middle order batter in Test cricket. Likes to bat at the top. World Cup winner. His stocks must have risen through the roof. But uh, Tom Moody, realistically, the two franchises go for him. I can see Sunrisers' interest. Dan Vittori is there. He was part of that Australian World Cup winning coaching staff. Uh, and perhaps there is room at the top of the order. They have Abhishek Sharma, the Sunrisers Hyderabad. But Mayank Agarwal, you're hoping you'll get the best out of Mayank Agarwal. You've lost Harry Brooks, so there is room there. But there are also lots of overseas batters in that team already. Makes sense of Sunrisers and CSK wanting Harry Brook, who's bid, sorry, wanting Travis Head, whose bid now is in excess of uh, six crore. Yeah, it, it surprises me because I, I thought Sunrisers. Um, one of the challenges they had was trying to find the right balance in their overseas players. I think uh, the Sunrisers' best balance is to have a specialist fast bowler, have Marco Jansen as the all-rounder at seven and play two specialist batters. Um, they've already got, if they play two specialist batters at the moment, probably Glenn Phillips is the one that's standing out of the, of the team. And he's a similar cricketer, Travis Head, you know, is an impact batter. OK, he bats in different positions but it can bowl some off-spin. So, to me, it's uh, an interesting one to go after at, at a high price because if you are chasing someone at an auction and you're prepared to push up into those high numbers, you're expecting them 
to be in your playing 11. You've actually written them down in your best playing 11. So I, I'd be interested to know where he fits in. As, is, as things stand, the Super Kings have pulled out of uh, the bid as it was escalating close to 7 crore. At 6.8, it is with the Sunrisers Hyderabad and it looks like that will that is where it will go. Uh, so we now are almost set. I'm going to wait for the gavel to go down from the auctioneer. But at 6.8 crore, that's still less than what Rogman Powell went for in the same set. Different roles, Powell middle order, part-time pace, Travis head top order, part-time spin. 6.8 crore, he could go to the Sunrisers here. I'm trying to think whether 6.8 Travis head is actually a bargain buy or... I think it's 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 a, uh, you know, I, I feel... Yeah, confirmation, let me, sorry to interrupt you, Wasi, but confirmation, Travis Head will go to the Sunrisers Hyderabad, where he will join the Australian assistant coach, Daniel Vittori. Uh, and that, uh, do you like that introduction more than former New Zealand captain or former RCB captain, Tom? But yeah, you could you could give me a reaction in a second or two. Let me get Wasim Jaffer's thoughts. Travis Head, 6.8 crore, Sunrisers Hyderabad. I think Sunrisers needed a backup opener, there's no doubt. But again, they've got Klassen, they've got Markram, Glenn Phillips. Uh, they have a spin. Uh, you know, their spin is, is very low. Uh, so... If he's bought at that price, they, they need to play him. So, again, it, it the balance, what kind of balance they'll match. Uh, but I think it's a good buy. He's in form. Uh, he'll enjoy batting at those Hyderabad pitches. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned Klassen, Markram, Phillips already. Now, Travis said, I thought instead of Harry Brook 2, they would go for either a spinner, because the spin reserves aren't very deep, or a fast bowler. But Travis said, surely he's going to bat at the top of the order, presumably with an Abhishek Sharma as... Two left-handers who can both... Or Mayank Agarwal, who's mm. yeah. already there. So, yeah, that's a bit of a surprise, but they'll have to see where they want... I mean, it's a clear indication that they see him playing at the top of the order now uh, Now that they've picked him. But I think having said that, I think it's a good price. They still have... They started with 34. They've got him for 6.8, so they still have a bigger budget yeah. than RCB, and they've got a gun player already who can bat bowl. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's a good bargain buy for uh, uh, Sunrisers, yeah. The bit that doesn't add up for me... We, we thought, we wanted to see how much recency bias will play its part, and it clearly has, because this is a player who in the last three years, across 20, 60, 20 innings, has one half century, a T20 strike rate of 120, and he hardly bowls in T20s. So I wonder how that adds up, as yeah. good a World and, Cup as and, he's had. These are numbers that would obviously be presented. Uh, they are always known that Travis Head's best work in international cricket does not come in this format, Tom Moody. Uh, and you have already mentioned that there will be a recency bias. But if you're presented with Travis Head's numbers and you know Travis Head's form, which what would make be the point of difference for you? Uh, look, I'd, I'd recognise what history tells me, but I'd also look at what, um, you know, I believe, you know, he's capable of doing in the right environment, in the right position in, in the team. Uh, the thing that I'm trying to get my head around is where he fits into this Sunrisers playing eleven. Um, you know, to me, their top three really pick themselves, and it's it's a, it's an all Indian top three with Abhishek Sharma, Sharma, and Mayank Agarwal and Tripathi, the top three, all very good players. Uh, any IPL side would you know welcome that as your top three, and then you've got your engine room, which is Markram and and Klassen. So I'm not sure where Philip Ad where um, Travis Head is going to fit into this makeup. So that's where I'm a little bit sort of. Uh, puzzled to, you know, why he's at Sunrisers uh, and why he got 6.8. OK, interesting. Time will tell as we look at the rest of the uh, shopping that the Sunrisers do finish bottom. Who finished bottom, remember, last year. So that comes with a bit of pressure. They've also been uh, change, having changes in coaching staff. Brian Lara last year, now in comes... Um, uh, Dan Vittori. So he's picked uh, up his first player. And, of course, he's been Rickin for his former uh, analyst, uh, or rather, the former star. How do I call Gautam Sundaraman? There's so many caps and hats he wears. <laughs> but GS is also there, basically. Just take it from us. The GS is there, and with Dan Vittori presenting uh, that data that will help him decide. Now, two players after that have not got any love. Karun Nair and Manish Pandey were the two Indians in the set, and nothing for them. Not very surprising. And, and they could come back later yeah. uh, and get something, get some interest. We'll see how it goes. Steve Smith is unsold. So, safe prediction. Hmm. Steve Smith goes on Soul. Congratulations to all of our panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all we all called it. Tough one, but we all <laughs> called it. I wonder if Steve Smith will find a buy later in the accelerated round. You never know. But yeah, those three players that I mentioned, Karun Nair, Manish Pandey, Steve Smith, all going on Soul. Tom Moody, no surprises there. Uh, I thought Manish Pandey may have uh, got picked up. Um, 
you know, at this stage of the auction, you can actually get a steal because everyone's sort of, you know, trying to sort of calculate where their big money is going to go. And sometimes um, you find a managed pan, they will come back into the auction, revisit it in the auction. He'll end up getting three or four crore. And you think, oh, gosh, why didn't I just put a bid in, you know, early in the in the uh, auction and just get the job done and put other teams under pressure to bid as well. But um, I think he'll definitely get picked up at some stage because, you know, he's got, you know, he's got something to offer. Hmm. All right. Well, the Sunrisers would be very excited. Travis Head was looked at as one of the big players entering this auction and where he would go. I'm sure any team would be very happy to have a World Cup winner of that scale and pedigree. So Tom Moody is one Sunrisers fan that we had. We've got another one now with Karthik Ayer. So let's see what uh, they make of Travis Head going to uh, the Orange Army. Let's get back to Karthik. The sun is shining on Meta's Threadathon, and Angad here is wearing his sunglasses. And Angad's happy because he's a Sunrisers Hyderabad fan, and they've just picked up Travis Head, World Cup winner, player of the match in the final, Travis Head. Angad, wow. are you excited? Definitely, definitely. And I was really excited for Travis Head because of the performance that has, he has played in the World Cup against India. So I was definitely excited. That, that didn't break your heart? No, no. Thorasa, but still, I'm okay right now. You're fine. You're a Sunrisers fan, so you're happy that Head is going to Hyderabad. Definitely. And uh, I, I knew from the start that it's going to be placed at Hyderabad only, no matter who comes in, uh, either it's Chennai or any other team. But I was definitely sure he's going to come in Hyderabad family also. So Angad knew. Ronak, did you? Back to you. The Sunrisers team. So I, this comes as no surprise. But thanks, Angad. Looking good. The sun's in his eyes, and he's all set to welcome uh, Travis Head to the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Right, now let's 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 also let's let's also move forward and uh, just confirm that a break has been taken, a short one. We now expect uh, the second set to get underway pretty quickly. So headline from the IPL auction is Rovman Powell at a little over seven crore to the Royals. You then have uh, uh, Harry Brook at four crore to the Capitals and Travis Head at 6.8 to uh, the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Three buys. Uh, Harry Brook, steal of the day already so far? Basim? I think so. I think, yeah, out of all three, uh, Harry Brook went to the right place. Uh, probably I'm surprised with Travis Head's selection. Uh, I don't know how they're going to fit him. Uh, Roman Powell, I think, got a good payday. Uh, I think Royals also needed that spot to be filled in. Uh, so, yeah, I think Brook probably is, is the budget buy for me. Mm. Yeah, Tom. Uh, what is, has this given us anything on what to expect for the rest of the auction? We've already been surprised. A trend perhaps has been broken that the first player coming out actually had a huge payday in the form of Robin Powell. Can we make any kind of prediction on what the rest of the day could be like? I think it tells a lot of just about the auction in itself. That you expect the unexpected. It's very hard to get inside uh, any franchise uh, strategy and how they're thinking. As as Many times you do a mock auction or whatever it might be you do in preparation. Um, I think a lot of teams would have been blindsided a bit by uh, Sunrisers going for Travis Travis Head. And also a lot of teams will be thinking now, gosh, I can't believe Delhi Capitals have got a bargain of four crow and get picking up Harry Brook. Brook. So all those types of emotions will be ticking, ticking over. But I think as we move forward, what we do know in these auctions is that you know, it doesn't go as you predict it. it. You know, the unexpected does happen, and you can guarantee there's going to be a couple of big surprises in the next hour or two. Yeah, and we we still haven't seen the Titans even pick up their paddle. They've got the maximum purse. So there are still so many things that are uncertain, unsure. Mitchell Stark and Pat Cummins and, and Rachin Ravindra are all still pending. So we wait and find out. Uh, anything that you've observed, Rasim, when it comes to these three bids, one of them being a pretty big surprise, uh, and what this could perhaps tell us, we have to remind ourselves and our viewers too that next year is the big auction. So you're looking at players who you can perhaps keep for a long time. In which sense, Harry Brook presents quite a predicament to the Capitals, doesn't he? You have Punts there, Mitchell Marsh there. Maybe David Warner is a decision that they'll take now at the next yeah. year's auction, that Harry Brook is the one yeah. to retain and not a David Warner. Yeah, yeah again, uh, you pick uh, players in this auction mainly for this season, and then if they do well, then obviously you get hold of them. So I feel like Tom said, you know, he's like a, a 
somebody who can build your franchise around uh, as an overseas player. So if if this season goes well for him, it's it's a tricky pitch for him though, mm. Delhi. Uh, but uh, he's been a bargain buy for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see him being retained next year. Over, dare I say, even Mitchell Marsh. If you have to pick one of the overseas players, let's say Andrik Nokia gets full fitness, you want to keep hold of Andrik Nokia. But there is case to believe that Harry Brook isn't just a one-season buyer. He may very well end up being at Fokker or even a great retention. Wouldn't he? Yeah, he's he is uh, he has proven to be an all-format player. Just three nights ago, he won uh, West. I mean, England. Uh, Improbable uh, 230 <coughs> chase, 25 of six balls, lower down the order. So, so he's proven his chops. Yes, he had a very uh, ordinary mm. first season, but then uh, that's happened to the best of players. So, I think there's potential to work with, and this season will give him that great chance to build on that initiation that he's had into uh, top flight international cricket. Mm. What's next? Uh, Yash said two coming up now yeah. in a few minutes. Uh, and those big all rounders yep. that we let's, set let's, up. Let's run through them. That, that same list of Kotze and Cummins and Hasaranga and Daryl Mitchell, Rachin Ravindra. You'll have Harshal Patel and Shardul Thakur in there as well. And I think, uh, without, don't want to miss out on anyone. So Chris Box is also part of that list. Won't, won't fancy him getting a huge payday. But yeah, I guess a lot of those purses that we see, Rajasthan probably will sit quiet in this one. Yeah. But you all the know. others. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, interestingly, I'm sure we will have discussions in a few minutes from now, Tom Moody, on Gerald Kutsia, who could land uh, an IPL gig, a major IPL payday, on Hasaranga, on Pat Cummins, uh, even Rachin Ravindra and Shardul Thakur. What about some of those that are actually not headlining this 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 set? Daryl Mitchell, Azmatullah, Omar Zai, Chris Wokes, as Yash mentioned. Would there be some interest there of trying to nick those players? Would they be valuable or would they be perhaps a surprise package where one of those players, maybe someone like Omar Zai or a good World Cup, could actually go for more than we expect? I, I think we might see uh, that there might be some uh, steals in this particular round. There's going to be a lot of money spent in this round. But I think the, the, the names you mentioned uh, are names that just may fly, fly under the radar and get picked up. Someone like Darren Mitchell is a really interesting case because he's a he's an extremely good player and he's quite a versatile player as well, can bowl a couple of medium pace overs that you wouldn't bank on four overs, but he can fill in for one or two. He's a good fielder. He's clearly got a temperament for the big game. So, you know, I then go back to the Rajasthan Rawls decision in paying that much for Rothman Powell. You know, they could have probably paid a quarter or a half uh, of that price and got Daryl Mitchell, who's a player that's played at Rajasthan Rawls in the past, that may have been a smarter pick and you would have probably saved yourself three or four crore. Mm, yeah, it's a good point. It's a very good point. Daryl Mitchell was part of uh, the uh, Rajasthan Rawls two seasons ago when they ended up what almost looked like panic shopping or you know belated shopping at the auction. They picked up four players in the, literally the last uh, portion of the accelerated round. Daryl Mitchell was among those players. He didn't quite get a long run after that and then was released. He's had a terrific World Cup, as we know, with New Zealand. A wonderful 100, even in the losing cause in the semi-final at the Wangke Day. So keep an eye out for Daryl Mitchell, even though we're all looking at some yeah. of the other players. You, you'd find you'd find interest in someone like Daryl Mitchell because overseas batters, if they don't bat top two, not a lot of them, or they aren't finishers like, say, Puran or Maxwell, you don't find a lot of love for the middle-order uh, overseas batter. Yeah, and there are some franchises who need somebody who can bat at four or five. Uh, you need some sensible guys there who can take the game. Uh, you, you don't all the time need, you know, the power hitters at the start of the inning. So, Daryl Mitchell is, again... Uh, you know, fantastic player, uh, in form, uh, and he can give you a couple of overs. So I think, uh, you know, he'll be somebody who can be a really good buy uh, for any franchise. What about Hasaranga? Who's in this set? Big money player, big reputation, lots of injuries, missing World Cups and whatnot. What do we expect from Hasaranga this day? I think RCB will, will need to go for him uh, because, again, I don't see any leg spinners there. They'll probably look to buy him cheaper, uh, if at all. Mm. If that happens, uh, but they need to fill up their spin department, bowling department for for that matter. Ha have have Asaranga stocks dropped? I'm trying to think. Though. Well, uh, if you look at the record, no, because he had the he was the highest run getter in the Lanka Premier League, highest wicket taker as well. So he was the MVP of the tournament. Uh, missed the World Cup, yes, but he's coming back from a 
serious injury, a back injury. So availability could be the only factor that teams will consider when they go uh, bidding for him. Hmm. Uh, it's possible that he'll be available at the yeah, start. Yeah, I think I, I read that Sri Lanka cricket have confirmed that he's available. That he's available. The so ch- the four, three or four Chamira key players. And- and Hasaranga are among those who will be available. Yeah, Tikshana, Hasaranga, Chamira and Patirana. and Patirana are the four. So, yeah, that's right. interesting. So, yeah, if availability is, is sorted, then I think he'll definitely be an asset. I think someone like Mumbai can look to get him. I mean, I don't know how much, to what extent they'll go for him because the spin stock's obviously not the strongest. They've got Piyush Chawla, they've got Kumar Kartikeya, so they can do with yeah. a nice um, overseas spinner in the middle. But again, price will be a big consideration because the purse isn't too big. So. It also does look like they've they built a template on wanting just padding depth. So, Hasaranga is one of those spinners that offers you something with the bat. Uh, but, Tom, yeah, have your say on this too. Hasaranga is going to be a player that we'll be having a keen interest in. Could he possibly get a better payday than he previously did? Those kind of funny things also happen. Mm. Yeah, we've seen it before, haven't we? Um, I think RCB will go for him, but... A team that hasn't been mentioned yet is uh, Sunrisers. I think Sunrisers might go hard for him. Uh, they need a specialist uh, a spinner. They had obviously Adil Rashid last year. They let him go. They've got plenty of money. Uh, there's obviously the Sri Lankan connection with Sunrisers with Matai Murali Duran in the think tank. So I'd be very surprised if Sunrisers don't um, go aggressively for Hasaranga. Um, and he could well, you know, find himself close to what he was paid last year at RCB. Yeah, Mank Markande is the only only spinner in that Sunriser squad. And if you look at RCB, Karan Sharma, Mayank Dagar, Himanshu Sharma, that's all their spin mm-hmm. options, not counting what overs they get out of Maxwell. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, Sunrisers also have Washington Sundar and Shabazz yeah. Ahmed now through. Oh, Shabazz yeah. Ahmed as well. Yeah, that, that yeah. was a trade made, curiously, uh, from RCB to Sunrisers. Mang Dagar going the other way. Shabazz is at least capped now for uh, India. And we'll have to see if that's the kind of role that uh, ends up making a telling difference. Sometimes these quiet players tend to have a role. And as we look at that team, where Travis Head has been picked up and will in all probability back at the top of the order, either with Mayank Agarwal or with Abhishek Sharma. Surely Abhishek Sharma will find room in this team and so will Rahul Tripathi. So, all eyes on uh, how uh, the uh, Sunrisers management manages that. And Wanindu Hasaranga, speaking of him, he's the first player out in the second set as the auction has resumed in Dubai. So, well, I'm going to have a keen look and see who all are interested in him. So, we mentioned Mumbai, who need a spinner. We mentioned Sunrisers, who need a spinner. <coughs> Is it fair to say, Wasim Shashank, there aren't a lot of good Indian wristpin options at this auction? Yeah, there are uh, not a lot of good wristpin options, uh, surprisingly. Uh, so <laughs> that, that makes the ones who are already back in the pool all the more valuable. So Hasaranga will definitely uh, attract a bid from RCB. And, I mean, he's on right now. And at some stage, they're definitely going to raise the paddle for him. Uh, the one thing with Hasaranga, though, is uh, on truer surfaces like uh, the Chinnaswamy last year, he struggled a bit. Much of his success in the IPL has so far come on uh, conditions in Dubai and Abu Dhabi where the pitches were slower, boundaries, especially in Abu Dhabi, a lot bigger. Yeah. So, 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 so that's one consideration for RCB. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll be very surprised if they don't bid for him at all. I'm trying to see. I think, I think the, the bid is with the Sunrisers. Just with the sunrise, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of fierce bidding. Could that just be some auction gamesmanship and somebody will come in at some point? But it looks like at 1.5 crore, one Hindu Hasaranga, one, one Hindu Hasaranga has been sold at 1.5 crore. And if I, from the just the corner of my eye, had a look at the reactions of Kavya Maran, the Sunrisers owners, and the entire Sunrisers table, of which we know most of them, Gaurav Sundaraman, Srinath Bashyam, and Daniel Vittori, the new head coach. They were in celebration. 1.5 crore. It's a huge pay cut for Vanindu Hasaranga. But Tom Moody, the Sunrisers think that they've perhaps been given a Christmas gift early. That is Christmas for the next 10 years. That's, that's, that's unbelievable that he's gone for 1.5. I can't believe uh, that all the teams that we mentioned, uh, if not more, wouldn't have um, put their hand up because purely you know that Sunrisers would have continued to go uh, and you could at least afford to push Sunrisers to a certain point and also feel the right that, look, if we ended up with Hasaranga, we've we've had a win as well. So to be left at the base price is an absolute shock. 
Yeah, and I, I'm, Rajan Ravindra has come up at the auction, but I'm going to stick on Hasaranga for a while because I think the Rajan Ravindra bid is not going to end soon, or will it? Anything can happen. But this is remarkable because we know that a number of teams would have at least calculated that Hasaranga is in our list. Let's go up to yeah. two crore for him. I can't imagine that nine teams or eight teams mm. have said here that we are not going to go for another Hasaranga, even if it is up to two crore, even if it meant, like Tom Moody says, two. Add to the yeah. Sunrisers' purse, who still now picked up two players. It almost balances out, Travis said, if he felt like he had gone for a little too much. This is something I can't understand. No yeah. eight franchises is not interested in Hasaranga. And few few franchises needed a leg spinner. Uh, you know, Sunrisers and one. Uh, but they've absolutely got the steal. So, yeah, it worked out really well. They, paid, they overpaid Travis Head, uh, but they've got this in the bargain. Hmm. Reactions? I'm wondering how dangerous this makes Hyderabad when any of those potential big money buys come in, because all of a sudden they have they have only one overseas slot left now. Mm. They have four slots left in total, and they have twenty five point seven crores still available to play with. Wow. So they can really stretch it to any limit yeah. when one of those star Cummins, the players we're expecting, go above fifteen crore come in. Yeah, and I, well, you know the Australian connection there in terms of Dan Vittori's recent. Uh, success and with the Australian team. So, Stark, Cummins, valuable players that he could look at or players that he'd certainly be having a closer eye on. How much we see Indian uncapped players go for in that team, I don't know. Because they let go of Ivran Sharma, who I thought was one of the players to look out for. Maybe he will be even at uh, But he came with a bigger price tag of 2.6 throws. So Correct. They had to release him once Maybe they'll they get him back cheaper, possibly. Potentially, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but I don't know if the... The uh, normally you associate Sunrisers with being good fast bowling because of Indian, the amount of Indians there, Bhuvi, Natarajan, Umran, but there's also an uncertainty around all those players. Yeah, all of them are injury prone recently. Natarajan didn't play cricket for two years and then came back last year. He's been on and off with the domestic form, so, so he hasn't played. Umran Malik, great potential, but again, someone who they haven't really shown a lot of faith in, in the second season. So, yeah, they've got some fast bowling uh, shopping to do, but with these two buys, I think, and with the budget that they've got, I mean, they can go for anyone they want now with 25 crores left and just three slots to fill or four slots to fill. Mm. Four slots, one overseas and 25.7 crore. Yeah, and as I recall, Tom, you can help me with this. Uh, after Rashid Khan was released for the Sunrisers, that was the big role to fill. And it seemed like the next best bet, because a lot of overseas spinners don't get game time. Hasaranga was an exception to that. He was almost looked at as the only other viable... A co contender for that spot as someone who can also bat and give you that depth. Uh, Hasaranga, what, did they go for him that year and not get him? And now, a couple of years later, they've still got someone to perhaps fill the biggest void that the Sunrisers have had in IPL history, which is the, uh, the replacement of Rashid Khan? Uh, from memory, I don't think they did go for him. Um, but there's no question that his name was in discussion. Uh, and I remember at the time, you know, I was very keen on on pushing for Hasaranga, but I think there was a there was a, a ceiling that uh, that was breached very quickly with him. As we know, he went for quite a lot of money, and and a lot of franchises sort of will have a have an estimate what they're prepared to go to for for a particular player. And once that's broken, um, you then look at Plan B or Plan C purely because. You, if you do sort of blow out too much on one player, then throws the rest of your strategy for the remaining uh, part of the auction, you know, to pieces. Mm. All right. Well, that's looking like a formidable team. And Yash has pointed out what the balance is. Looks like uh, Rachin Ravindra has found a home as well. And uh, we're just going to confirm. Yep, Super Kings. Rachin Ravindra in yellow. The Chennai Super Kings have picked up uh, the poster boy from New Zealand cricket at the World Cup, 1.8 crore. Yeah, and just to fill in on how the bidding went, Delhi were initially interested. CSK stayed right from the start. Delhi were in it. I think they opted out around the 1 crore mark, mm. after which it was CSK and Punjab Kings yeah. battling for Rachin Ravindra. And finally, he goes to CSK. CSK at 1.8 crore. Wasim Jafar, reaction? I think it's a good buy. Probably a replacement for Moin Ali. Uh, that's what I see. But uh, whether he can bat at five, four or five, uh, that can be, you know, we'll find out. Uh, mm. He likes to bat top of the order. Uh, but he started batting at number six or seven for, for New Zealand. He was only promoted opening the batting in this World Cup uh, because of Williamson's injury. Uh, but it's a, it's a good buy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, though, CSK are clearly doing slightly different things here. They're looking at the future. 
they normally don't worry too much about the inexperienced Asia. Rather, they'd like to go for that experienced, established players, Tom. But with Conway, Moeen, is he only a replacement for Moeen Ali? But I'm looking at Devin Conway there, Shivam Dube there, Ravindra Jadeja, Moeen Ali. That's four left-handers already. Now, does Rachin Ravindra at best be a squad player here? Uh, they, of course, had to do without Ben Stokes most of last year. But thoughts on Rachin Ravindra? And is he a starter for CSK? Uh, I think, firstly, it's a it's a good buy. A cheap at, at 1.8 crore is a, a good price. Um, I don't see him in the starting 11, but I see him as a, a very valuable uh, backup player for either Mohan Ali or Conway if there's have any issues with Conway uh, from an injury standpoint. So you've got a natural um, player to come in. And it may also be that, you know, there's a certain team that you want to play an extra part-time left-arm spinner. Uh, so you might switch out Mohan Ali uh, and play... Um, uh, Ravinda in that situation if you're looking for that sort of matchup. Uh, but yeah, uh, to me, and I think I said at the start of the show, it, I, I thought he'd go to CSK purely because he just looks like a CSK player to me. And uh, it's the type of player they tend to go for. Yep, they're Mitchell Santner there. Uh, Stephen Fleming has been such an important part of their think tank over the years. So there is a lot of love for New Zealand players. Devin Conway is such an important part of their top order too. And of course, if you uh, enjoy the the slight gaffes that happened on commentary during the World Cup. We now have Rachin, Ravindra, Jadeja all play together. It should be fun. Sorry, I need to... How much know, it's not mine. <laughs> no, it's... Yeah. If you're giving room for that, do we have room for the rumour mill? Because if we go back to what social media has been buzzing with, with the big transfer, there's a lot of talk that it might be Ravindra Jadeja, who's the one who's part of that swap deal. Wow, so this is they, fun. Conspiracy so theory. The namesake, <laughs> Let's, the replacement. So that is, yeah, you, you guys are following these stories, I hope, uh, that maybe CSK are interested in a high profile trade post the auction, which we believe is allowed, right? The yeah, auction is allowed. The trade yes. window will open again after the auction. Yes. So if a high profile trade has to be made, could this be that CSK are uh, buying insurance for? Losing potentially Ravindra Jadeja. Basim, just, just for fun, speculate, <laughs> enjoy this conspiracy theory. Could it be true? Possibly, possibly. Mm. That's why I like you. Um, Basim, say something more, Basim. Give <laughs> us more. And they've also got Mitchell there. So yeah. they've got another left arm, competent left arm spinner yeah. who can give you four uh, bankable overs. So yeah, I don't think all's lost for them if they were to, if Jadeja were to leave. But again, superstar who's just won you. Tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Are you willing to release him now, and are you willing to potentially yeah. trade him? Those are questions very unlike CSK, yeah. right? You don't think that they they'd probably do such a thing, but correct. Yeah. You never know. I mean, we've seen Surya Kumar Yadav's heart being broken in uh, what is a cryptic post on social and media. And Jasprit Bumrah. Jasprit Bumrah. CSK are looking perhaps for some kind of leadership post Dhoni, uh, but that uh, that could very well be in Rutraj Gaikwad, who's already looked at as part of the leadership group when he uh, plays for India now. Um, Shardul Thakur's uh, bids have been completed and CSK are being busy. They've found uh, Shardul back earlier on. This has CSK and MS Dhoni written all over it, doesn't it, uh, Tom Moody? Back at CSK for four crores, so pay cut, but at a franchise that he enjoyed some serious success under MS Dhoni. I'm really surprised that he's gone for just four crore. I, I would have thought he would have been north of 10 crore just purely because of uh, the rarity of quality Indian talent in this auction. Um, and there's a couple of teams that, you know, I think he would have fitted into quite nicely uh, at, a, at a certain level. You know, Gujarat Titans, for instance, could have gone for him as a replacement um, for the all-rounder they lost uh, he obviously, you know, a different level of uh, skill, but certainly uh, provides the balance that they uh, that they lost. Mm, all right, and maybe you could weigh in on that conspiracy theory that had all of us seduced for a moment or two, Tom. Uh, do you believe in any of that? You're a wise man. You've been on the other side of it. How true could these conspiracy theories be, where CSK are looking to perhaps trade in one of Mumbai's big boys and return Ravindra Jadeja, who, as we tend to hear whispers across the IPL fraternity. Mumbai have always had an interest in Ravindra Jadeja. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it if it was it was going to happen because Mumbai is a, a side that is very active around the trade um, scenario. A lot of teams uh, don't tend to embrace the trade or understand 
the, uh, the the dynamics of of the trade window, but where Mumbai do it, uh, they've already pulled off an absolute genius stroke in getting Hardik Pandya away from Gujarat Titans. So it would not surprise me because they do need to replace uh, Raidu, who who played an important role in that middle order. So they do need an Indian middle order player. All right, so there you go. Uh, there, There is something for you to consider going forward. Now, there's a lot happening at the auction. Pat Cummins, the Australian World Cup winning captain's bid, has just raced through to excess of four crore, and the Mumbai Indians have uh, entered the auction. But they don't have a lot of money left, but they are again looking for uh, batting depth that we've spoken of. Remember, they lost Cameron Green as a result of Hardik Pandey coming in. We'll come to that in a little while because this bid is already just racing through. It's MICSK for Pat Cummins. So could we see Cummins in yellow uh, for uh, the Super Kings? Could we see him go to MI? But in between that, Azmatullah Omarzai will add to the great story of Afghan cricketers being purchased by IPL franchises. And he's going to have some company. The Gujarat Titans, Tom Moody speaks about replacing Ardik Pandya's skill set. Omarzai to the Titans for his base price, I believe. Shashank yeah. Kishore, 50 lakh. Uh, and joining Noor and Rashid. Absolute steal at 50 lakh. The one thing that I heard during the off-season was that um, a lot of the scouts from the Titans have spent time in Dubai and also in the, all the other leagues, the ILT20, uh, they've also had someone representation in the Afghan uh, Shapiza League that they play there in Kabul. So, mm -hmm. so they've managed to actually go into Afghanistan to pick those talented players there. And Azmatullah Omozai had a great World Cup. I mean, batted, scored 100, bowled overs. So he's a value buy um, in the middle order for them. So at 50 lakh, I mean, you 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 thought that he'd probably go for a lot more, yeah. but it's an absolute steal at 50 lakh. Uh, even if he plays just three or four games, um, looking at the makeup of the 11, you, you, you'd you think that probably he may not be in the first 11. Uh, it's still a great buy and a great asset to have uh, at different times during the tournament. Yeah, I mean, uh, in this situation, you're looking at him same as... Uh, a squad player also, if required. I mean, that's his seventh overseas buy. So they can only have one left. So they've clearly come into this auction. They let Alzari Joseph go, which we were a bit surprised by. Mm. So maybe they're in the market for perhaps that Mitchell Stark option. But here, Omar I picked up at 50 lakh. Thoughts on that? Absolute steal. Again, I feel uh, he's another guy who will play a lot more IPL, I feel, because he can bat at four or five, can bowl, he bowls at 140 clicks. So again, it's it's a very good buy, and I think it'll settle into real well into that Gujarat Titans dressing room. Yeah, Tom. As we talk about replacing the skill set, you mentioned perhaps Titans could have been interested in Shardul at Omar's fifty lakhs. Is that the skill set replaced? Yeah, look, it is. Uh, I think it's a great buy. Um, you know, incredible. Risk. I thought he might have a, a a pretty good day out at the auction, but um, yeah, look, he. he He's certainly shown a lot of skill and talent, um, and I don't see him as a starting 11 player, but he's certainly a very effective player that they can move in and out of the side according to team balance and where they're playing and who they're, who they're playing. Mm, all right. Azmatullah Omar Zai, a wonderful story that was part of a larger Afghanistan story that just uh, warmed the heart with how well they played at the recent World Cup. It's not a big amount. It's his base price, but he's got uh, a team that's... Uh, whose reputation is on the rise. The Titans have been winners and uh, near runners-up uh, in their opening two seasons. So this is a franchise that is keenly uh, looked at as a, a team that knows what they do at the auction table. So there goes Asmatullah Omar Zai. Pat Cummins is going to enjoy his payday today. He's very close in three. Yash, what have you been yeah. following? Who's interested in the Australian captain? Mumbai have gone out. RCB have come in. CSK, RCB and around the 7-7.5 seven, seven crore mark it's already gone to. So, um, and Punjab are also interested, I believe. I saw Punjab raise their paddles too. Wasn't, wasn't that Punjab who won there? Or did I get that wrong? Could have been RCB. So just remind me of those teams again. So Mumbai initially with CSK. And then RCB entering. RCB. So RCB getting Pat Cummins. That, I mean, it adds up. We're looking at them needing bowling. Yeah. Yeah. CSK paying this kind of money though after picking up Ravindra Shardul. So they're looking to do a serious amount of shopping too. Or um, maybe CSK, you know playing the fool around and trying to mm. increase the bids and in, have other teams spend big. So that's a strategy at play, which is very underrated in the IPL, isn't it? I yeah. mean, a lot of teams sometimes try and elevate the bids, you know, save up their own purse for someone later so that they won't have petition. So that's, that's a strategy at play that uh, doesn't get talked about a lot in the IPL. And I think it's CSK very well doing that. Mm. Yeah. Surprise, actually, SRH pull out of uh, Shardul, to be honest, because they had the purse. Uh, they needed somebody uh, who could 
you know, along with Bhuvi who could bat and bowl. Yeah. So, and they had the purse, so I'm surprised they pulled out of that uh, bit. They, yeah. are, they are entering back with that purse, Sunrisers, because now they are into the Pat Cummins bid. Wow, and uh, Pat Cummins is a millionaire, right? Uh, yeah. Well in excess now, the yeah. most... The highest paid player already this auction, even though we are very much in the early days and early stages. Uh, 11.5 or 12 crore now, and it's between RCB and the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Let's just remind you that RCB have yet to pick up someone yeah. today, right? And they have the Cameron Green trade there. So will Cummins join Cameron Green at RCB? Will Cummins join Travis Head at Sunrisers? Clearly, Daniel Vittori likes his Australian team that uh, won the World Cup, uh, Tom Moody. And at times, we look at Pat Cummins. What was that bid to KKR? That was 15.5. 15 15.5. 15 He's almost at that kind of payday, even though we've seen uh, that Pat Cummins' returns in the IPL have not been as good. Please make sense of this bid, which is now, as I speak, touching 13 crore. Yeah, it does surprise me. Look, Pat Cummins is a very fine bowler. Um, in T20 cricket, he, he, he misses one really important skill for a player that you're paying an enormous amount of money for, and that is to the ability to bowl at the death. And if you're if you're paying top dollar uh, for an overseas uh, pace bowler, you want them to be able to cover off that area. And that's, to me, the advantage Stark has over Pat Cummins as a, an, a, an appealing buy in this auction. I'm also just thinking aloud here, but uh, thinking out loud here, but at 15 crore, the bid, or touching 15 crore very soon, 14.75 with Bangalore, and Sunrise is interested. Are the Sunrise is shopping for a captain, Tom Moody? I mean, his Aidan Markram has certainly got the abilities for leadership, but this kind of appetite shown for Pat Cummins, is he in any way being looked at as potentially a, a leadership option? Well, who knows? Um, anything can happen um, when it comes to that leadership role, but I'd be surprised if Markram isn't captain, purely because he was very successful as captain uh, in South Africa in the franchise that the Sunrisers have in South Africa. Um, he's he's now the uh, he's captain. You know, he's got a, a lot of experience, and if you talk to the players, a lot of players enjoy his leadership style. Um, so yeah, maybe that is on the on the uh, radar. But at the end of the day. Who knows what Sunrise is looking to do? Who knows what's going on? 18.5, level with Sam Curran is Pat Cummins. Make that history. 1875, Pat Cummins is now the most expensive player ever at an IPL auction. And we have touched 19. We were all looking at Stark and his good buddy Pat Cummins has come in and just robbed the bank here, right? 19 crore with the Sunrisers and we are still not done. RCB's balance purse is 23.25. We thought they might throw a large chunk of it on one player. They've taken the bid back at 19.25. The Sunrise is not letting go at 19.50. It is madness. Remember, there are two people here involved with the Australian winning team. Andy Flowers at RCB. He was with that Australian winning team too. Dan Vittori is with uh, SRH. And he is also... And they're both just ripping each other's purses apart for the Australian captain. The bid has touched 20 crores. The rest of the auction is in applause. Maybe because they're like, this is what we like. Sunrise is blow out this money that you were intimidating us with. But 20 crores. Let's get a reaction here. Guys, what's going on? Wasim Jafar, what is going on? You've got your hands crossed like that. Yeah. I mean, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Never thought uh, Pat Cummins, because again, uh, his IPL numbers aren't great. Uh, like Tom mentioned, uh, you know, his death bowling. Again, he's, he's bowling at the start as well. Uh, he's never had an outstanding IPL. Mm. Uh, possibly SRH looking at a captaincy option also. Uh, but again, this is exorbitant money. 20.5. Great chance for Sunrisers to now back out and then RCB says, and, and tell RCB, bye-bye, sit down, cool down for the rest of the auction. Yeah. You don't have any money left. I mean, RCB have spent the entire uh, off-season scouting, going to Jammu, going to the Far East, going to Mizoram, mm. going to Nagaland look for scouts and look looking for players. I mean, you wonder what will be the use of all that if they were to now splurge on Pat Cummins at 21 crore or 20 crore and not have any purse to shop for the players that they've been on the lookout for 
all year round. So that's a little bizarre to see them go yeah. to uh, 20 plus. I can only assume yeah. if you're with what you're saying, if they are interested in that, that they are basically expecting no other competition for those players. And these are a bulk of Indian uncapped players they could pick up at unless unless they think 10 but, or 20 lakh. But, but with the risk. robust scouting network yeah. today, you know, it's very hard to hide <laughs> someone with talent. It's risky. It's very risky. And to think that I was still expecting them to pay this kind of money for Stark. Yeah. But for Cummins, I mean, Stark at the Chinnaswamy versus Cummins at the Chinnaswamy, and I think it's still not over at 20.5. With sunrises, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, wow, this is this is madness. This is insane. But well done to the World Cup winning captain, who was instrumental in just turning the tail of the World Cup and causing... Interestingly, the exactly climax. a month to the day, right? Yeah, November today. 19, now December 19, so... Uh, yeah. Amazing how life changes. One month is all it takes. And he's in the, the 19 crore tag. mark as well. Oh, yeah, sorry, the World more Cup than... tagline was, one day is all it takes. Takes one day. month, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. And, I mean, he's the, he's one of the nicest guys in the game. He's a good guy, isn't he, Pat Cummins? I'm a good guy, I don't get 19 crore, 20 crore for anything. But, yeah, this is brilliant. So uh, just to bring back that 22 number, when he went for 15 and a half crore that season for KKR, he managed seven wickets, but more worryingly, the economy was touching 11. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you pay 20 crore to somebody like Bumrah, it does make sense. Because you can bowl in all three uh, stages of the game. Uh, again, Pat Cummins hasn't proved himself, uh, you know, at T20 format especially. I can understand it's a test auction. Uh, you'll pay him that much. But for T20, who's just going to bowl four over? Yeah. Uh... I'm, I'm going to wait for Tom Moody to uh, take some time and get his thoughts. And he's a man who's now collected them, I'm sure. Uh, just confirming that we it are... It is confirmed. Sunrisers Hyderabad, 20.5 crore, the first ever 20 crore hit. 20 crore breached. We discussed this. It's happened. It's happened to an Australian fast bowler, but it's not Mitchell Stark, Tom Moody. Pat Cummins, 20.5 crore to Sunrisers Hyderabad. Your reaction? Well, I think that the fact that... Um, Sunrisers ended up getting uh, Hasaranga for 1.5. They felt that, well, they've got five to seven crore up their sleeve to go even harder for one of their other targets, which was obviously Pat Cummins. So it's it's more about not so much what Pat Cummins is worth, but it's more about uh, this is a target that clearly Sunrisers um, had in mind and because of the Hasaranga steel, they could just cash in and go all the way uh, and get the man they wanted. But quite rightly, as Yash pointed out, um, they could have really stitched up RCB and left them, you know, in, in all sorts of trouble, having paid uh, over 20 crore for Cummins and then still had a lot of work to do in the auction with very little funds. Oh, that's a very good, that's, that's something that I wish we could explore. But now that RCB have been, saved that uh, stressful situation. I, mean, I remember an auction many years ago with Yuvrat Singh being bid for more than he was released. And that could have completely fractured the rest of the auction for RCB. These are RCB things, right? They just happen. Luckily, we don't have to worry about it. It's moot. Sunrisers have grabbed Mitchell, have grabbed Pat Cummins. And as a result of that, that's the end of their overseas contingent because they already came into this auction with uh, five overseas players in the form of Makram, Phillips, Klaassen, Faruqi and Janssen. They picked up uh, first trap at at uh, 6.8, then Vanindu Asaranga at the 1.5, and now Patrick Cummins at 20.5. So 20.5. So if I look at that, I guess 20.5 plus 1.5, that's 22, and 6.8 for Travis Head. So 28.8 crore out of their remaining purse of 34 was saved for overseas players. Is that is that one way, Tom, of looking at it, that they have kept that much aside for their overseas and they are happy completing it in that form with Head, Hasranga and Cummins? I think that's exactly the way that they looked at it. They would have seen that they came into this auction with 34 crore. They realised they needed three um, overseas players with specific skill sets. And to be fair... They've, they've done very, very well. And what's allowed them to do very, very well is the absolute mind-blowing steal of Hasaranga for 1.5 crore. Hmm. You sense somewhere maybe Hasaranga will be telling Pat Cummins some of that. <laughs> you know how you have uh, what we call dealer tip when we play some cards <laughs> at occasionally that because of me, you've been able to achieve this result. Yeah, but anyway, at some point maybe... Maybe it could happen. Another sale has happened, right? So the let's 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 nurse the hangover from Pat Cummins and Gerald Kutsia, a player on the rise too, 
goes to the Mumbai Indians at 5 crore. There's a South African connection very much there with Mark Boucher. They have an interest in the SA-22. They already have Devil Brevis there. Uh, and we have seen an appetite for these all-round ability players. They've drawn Janssen there previously, so there is room for the South Africans. Tristan Stubbs was released. But Gerald Kutsia, 5 crore to Mumbai Indians. Basim, thoughts on 5 crore? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, he had a good World Cup again. I think he brings a lot of value uh, as an all-rounder uh, and, and he bowls at 145 clicks. So, I think it's a good buy uh, for Mumbai. Yeah, yeah. Good replacement, I mean, for Jofra Archer, who they paid a lot more for and they know that he's fit, he's in form, he's doing well. And on red soil wickets with bounce, he'll mm. be more than a handful. Mm. And also a very underrated batter. He can yeah, bonk yeah. the ball big. Uh, at bats at number seven in the South Africa 20. So, probably, maybe that's a position, uh, one position higher at Mumbai, but there's still the option to go to him if yeah. they want to. So, good all-round package for five crores. Yeah, they, the rule for them is they want someone who can bat till 11, right? Or maybe till 10. <laughs> Bumrah's excused. Everybody else better know how to bat. Yeah, 35. Yeah. Record holder, test cricket, Jaspreet Bumrah. Much better batter. No, no. Stop it. Stop it, <laughs> Shashank. Okay. I know Bumrah really believes he's improved in his batting, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, Ja. Yeah, what it does do is it uh, allows Mumbai to get closer to that template that they've loved over the years. Two overseas fast bowlers. Because you just look at with Hardik coming back in, there is proper scope to have two mm. fast bowlers. And now you have two reliable overseas fast bowlers already in Berendorf and Kutsia. Berendorf was obviously there yeah. last season. So them along with Bumrah, Akash Madhwal obviously came up last season, but you have to see whether the second season works out. So, they have that covered. Yeah, doing the math of it, um, this is where they perhaps told them that the Hardik Pandya is of greater value to them than Cameron Green, as good a season as Green had. Uh, they now can go to that successful template. And they always build their success around home success at the Wanke Day. You now can envision Bumrah, Berendorf, Kutsia, Madhwal, perhaps, along with the Piyush Chawla and Hardik Pandya. Suddenly, Mumbai's bowling seems in good health. And it was already a good batting team. Storm. I sorry, was that? Yes, Tom. Yeah, that please. To yes, that's very much yeah, to you. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I think to be honest with you, I think that this is a really smart buy from Mumbai. They knew they they couldn't compete for the Cummins or the Starks or the Fergusons. The, the you know the fast bowlers that are out there that have got experience. Um, but where they could compete is in this sort of middle rung. And I thought could see it might go for more than five crore. He's still obviously unproven uh, in the IPL, but he's got all the ingredients as a very, very exciting fast bowler. So, I think, as you quite rightly say, that Mumbai have shifted back to what's worked so consistently for them over, over time and have that combination of two um, fast bowlers to, to, to pair up against, uh, pair up with, I should say, Bumrah. All right, yeah. They had uh, as many as four overseas slots still to fill, so they picked up one of those... They uh, the Mumbai Indians at 17.75. You can nick five off that now as uh, we now move to the next big money signing. Just for confirmation, Kutsia, you can certainly see him as part of not just Mumbai's squad but in his playing 11, depending on who else they pick up and only carries on this philosophy that they have of having bowlers who can bat. Remember, Mario Shepard has also been traded from the Super Giants. He is a specialist death bowler for the West Indies in the T20 format now, and we know he can tonk it too. Right, Harshal Patel, million dollar baby again, 10.25 crore and counting, 10.75 released by RCB, and the Titans and uh, the Punjab Kings seem to be interested in the services of Harshal Patel, who is not going to have the kind of pay cut that Hasaranga did, his fellow RCB colleague, on entering the auction. And it, it makes sense. We saw how surprised Tom was at Shardul Thakur's price being as yeah. low as it was. Because you can see Indian seam bowlers, especially experienced Indian seam bowlers, being a common uh, gap for so many teams to fill uh, in this auction. Uh, it's stopped early for Shardul. Also, it ties in with that point about at times coming early in the auction yeah. not being beneficial to you. Harshal comes later. Now these teams are more desperate to have that sole surviving domestic facer. Mm -hmm. yeah. What a week it is uh, in the life of Harshal Patel. Two nights ago, won the uh, Vijay Hazare trophy uh, for Haryana. Was the highest, joint highest wicket taker there. And here he is at the IPL mm -hmm. auction earning a potentially a bigger payday or a 
same amount of uh, money. Now there, he's at 1075. Yeah. So yeah, tell us a little more in detail, Shashank, about what Harshal's been up to. He's obviously not, he's now, I don't even think, on the fringes of the Indian team, whereas a year or so back, he was looked at as, you know, a frontline bowler for the T20 World Cup. What's Harshal Patel's fitness and form record of late? Well, uh, he interesting, uh, because he played the most uh, amount of T20 cricket for India between the two World Cups, 2021-22. Mm. And then because of Jaspreet Bumrah's injury, the Indian team balance kind of got hampered. So that's why he probably lost out. And then uh, and on the games that were played immediately after the World Cup, were all on flat beds. So he probably got a bit of a raw deal. But, but he's been playing domestic cricket regularly. He also opens the batting for Haryana and mm. T20 cricket. Has been striking at 170, 180. Uh, he's improved his batting a great deal, worked on his range hitting. Uh, he's worked with a local coach. I mean, when you kind of make that much money, you're probably better off in... He's invested that money into his cricket, uh, worked in the off-season on his power hitting. And uh, it, that's one underrated facet of his game that's really gone up a few notches. Uh, so uh, he couldn't do that at RCB earlier this year because mm. he had a finger injury in the middle of the tournament. So. He missed out a couple of games and he also was half fit and he came back in towards the back end. Uh, so, yeah, he's done a lot of work on his game. He's a good thinking cricketer. Uh, he analyzes his game, uh, works on his fitness. Uh, very, very good by whoever gets him. Yeah, and it's confirmed now. It's Punjab Kings, right? Punjab Kings have made their first high profile and high priced buy at this auction 11.75 crore, nearly six times of Arshal Patel's base price. And he's got an even better paid in after being released by RCB for 1075. He goes to uh, Punjab Kings, Wasim, the franchise you've uh, worked closely with over the last few seasons. 11.75 mm. uh, makes sense of that, as we'll also bring up the Punjab squad to see what kind of holes Harshal Patel fills for them. Well, they've got already got Arshdeep, they've got Rabada, uh, and they've got Sam Karan. Uh, so it would have probably, to me, would have made sense if Shadul. Thakur have gone into that that team. Uh, somebody who could bat at number eight, maybe nine, strengthen their batting, bowl as a fourth seamer, uh, bowl at the death also. Uh, but again, uh, you know, Sanjay Banga likes him. Uh, he had him in the RCB as well, so you can understand that connection. Uh, but uh, he'll be handy. There's no doubt about it. Mm, all right. Well, this is some some serious money being spent, and Tom Muri called it eleven point seven five. Crore uh, to Harshal Patel. Tom, your reaction is the set now we expect coming to a slightly more sober end, but 11.75 crore Harshal to Punjab Kings. Yeah, look, I think it's a good buy. It's it's just a classic example of supply and demand, isn't it? You've got, uh, you know, bowlers, uh, limited bowling options, particularly ones that have got experience and international experience like Harshal Patel. He's also got the capability of of being quite versatile as, as as a bowler, but also as a batter, as a as an impact player with a bat. So, you know, he's clearly filling a an important gap for uh, Punjab. But you know, it's no surprise to see Gujarat, ta you know, go for him and continue to sort of bid for him for a while. I was surprised they pulled out because out of any team, they've got the purse to flex their muscles. Um, you know, in this auction. Um, and uh, I was actually interested to see Lucknow go as far as they did for him, given their given their sort of uh, limited purse of only just over 13 crore. All right. Well, let's just confirm what that Punjab King squad looks like with the acquisition of Harshal Patel for 11.75. Remember, they let go of Shah Rukh Khan that released a decent purse for them, but they still retain the likes of Sam Curran, who uh, did uh, set the record, which is now dated. Pat Cummins is the most expensive player. Arshal Patel rejoined the likes of uh, Arshdeep Singh, Kagiso Rabada uh, in that uh, pace attack. And keep an eye out for, um, for how that Punjab team goes. It's already building and looking to be an improved team. Uh, we'll be back in about five minutes with the uh, two remaining players in this squad. But just uh, stay with us right through the day on ESPN Rick and Fox. And there's a lot to unwind.
Well, I hope you're still with us on ESPN Rigan for Auction Day because there is plenty to uh, discuss and unwrap as uh, set two, where we did predict here on our panel with Tom Moody joining us from Australia, Wasim Jaffer in studio, Shashank Kishore as well from uh, our Bombay offices, and Dustin Silgado has impact subbed in for Yash Jha, who's got a nice little break, and we'll try and make sense of uh, everything that's happened in the first two sets. The first big story that came uh, since we last uh, were on air was... Daryl Mitchell going for 14 crore to CSK. Let's try and make sense of that. Ben Stokes released last year for 16. They already picked up uh, Rachin Ravindra and Shardul Thakur earlier today. So what is Daryl Mitchell doing at CSK at 14 crore? Wasim Jafar? Well, I think he'll probably replace Moin. That's what we said again uh, regarding Rachin Ravindra also. But uh, Daryl Mitchell looks like the guy uh, who's going to bat in the middle order. Uh, in place of Moin Ali. Uh, but I think it's a good buy. I am happy for Daryl Mitchell. He's, mm. he's done really well uh, recently and he deserves a good payday. Yeah, I mean, we thought recency bias will be a thing. Not such a thing. I mean, 14 crore for Daryl Mitchell. I love that, you know, the man's getting that sort of money. But were you surprised with how much CSK were willing yeah, to Yeah, pretty surprising with the price and how much they were willing to go for him. But the one thing that's changed for Daryl Mitchell from his previous stint with Rajasthan Royals is just uh, his approach, at, uh, you know, when he comes into bat. Uh, even at the World Cup, you saw at no point when he, when he was at the crease was he looking to just, you know, play himself. And he was always looking to take the attack to the bowlers. And I think that's one, um, that's one area of his game that's really gone up several notches since his... Uh, uneventful stint with Royals and I think that's something that they must have really uh, picked up and uh, yeah Moin Ali as we discussed earlier uh, probably towards the uh, last leg of his career uh, may, may or may not be a certainty anymore so I think in that way I think this is a good mm -hmm. passing of the baton from Moin Ali to uh, Daryl Mitchell. Yeah. Again Lots I think he yeah. plays spin really well. Uh, yep yeah, absolutely. Know, somebody, uh, that's how CSK picks players also. Uh, somebody to replace uh, Raidu as well. Mm. Uh, he plays spin really well, take the op attack to the opposition from get-go. So it's it's a good buy. Overpriced, uh, definitely, but yeah. uh, good buy. Yeah, seven overseas slots filled, and that now takes the Kiwi count in the Super Kings, uh, which Stephen Fleming there already, but I'm not counting him in that, to four uh, with Ravindra Conway and Mitch Santner in that team. So, interesting, 14 crore. But uh, did that take us by shock? Super Kings fans, I wonder if Super Kings fans would have thought Mitchell is going to come at 14 crore to our team tomorrow. I think once they got Ravindra, they probably thought he was going to be the Moin Ali replacement. But then they got somebody who's now a lot for a lot more money. So, it's funny, we were all talking about Rachin Ravindra being the Kiwi star in the auction. But he looks like he's now going to be a backup player, basically, to Daniel mm. Mitchell. Yeah, possibly. Tom Moody? Please make sense of that. We look at the overseas player acquisitions almost in in clusters now, and that's why we made sense of Pat Cummins' price along with Hasaranga's for Sunrisers. Now we're looking at Daryl Mitchell as well as Rachin Ravindra, but Mitchell, 14 crore to the Super Kings. What's going on there? Yeah, look, it's, it's a surprising number, 14 crore for, for Daryl Mitchell. I think we're all thrilled that he's had a payday because, you know, he's been such a... Um, understated and, and consistent player across uh, all the formats. And he seems to um, step up to the big occasions and play those big occasions well. A good player of spin, uh, which wasn't touched on, which is an important thing if you're going to be wearing yellow, because uh, half your games, at least half your games, the ball's going to be turning and you need to be able to have some sort of clue to how to navigate that. But I think, um, again, this is a purchase. It's not about how much... Is it worth it, uh, you know, on the money front? This is more about what uh, the need of CSK is, and they clearly needed, and they felt that Mitchell was the person that can fill this role, um, someone in the middle that can navigate uh, the innings <coughs> and see how the game quite deep. Yeah, would you agree then with what we were just discussing before I went to you, Tom, that Moin Ali now is at best a squad player, a reserve player, uh, and Daryl Mitchell now is certainly... Uh, going to back up or follow up the likes of uh, Devin Conway and Ruturaj Gaikwad and bat in the top four? It, it's looking very much like Moen Ali is uh, the last pick out of the, <laughs> out of the names you mentioned. Um, and again, this is a bit of a CSK trait. They have a great regard and respect for their players. Um, you know, on another franchise, maybe Moen Ali would have been released. Uh, but CSK don't operate that way. They 
they um, that they showed huge amount of trust and, and and respect for their players in a cycle uh, of a of an option, and this is the last year of that cycle. So I think this is um, you know you know a, a bit of a, a a farewell present to Mo and Ali, but n not to say that he's not going to play, but he's he's not going to be in front of the queue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to think that they could have actually released eight crore from their person. I wonder if Moin Ali would have attracted that kind of money had he gone into the auction. They could have possibly even bought him back for cheaper. But that's just not serious because maybe Moin will play two <coughs> games and mm. you know, we'll spin them to win and to victory in both those two games. The other one that happened in that to just close off that high profile set was uh, Chris Wokes who uh, expressed his disappointment recently on not being part of England's test team to India. And Chris Wokes has had his uh, share of shuffling around for IPL franchises. His most recent destination will now be uh, the Punjab Kings. Asim Jafar, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think he's, he's a good bowler, good good backup player, I would say, for Sam Curran. Uh, you know, if Sam Curran doesn't start really well, uh, you could easily say uh, he didn't have the, the best... Uh, second half last year. Yeah. Uh, so if he doesn't start well, you could easily see uh, Chris Wokes coming in uh, and, you know, adding that value into that squad. So I think it's a good buy uh, for Punjab. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to see um, uh, who else was interested. KKR were interested in Wokes, who has played there before. And he also did not have the most impressive World Cup, but that can be said about most of the England team. Uh, at 4.2 crore, Wokes getting a bit. We thought he might get a bit. 4.2 seems a pretty decent payday. For him, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, very good payday. And Punjab had the budget, so it wasn't like you know they were constrained in any way to you know go for him. So I think uh, it was just a case of identifying him to be a backup for Sam Curran, and I think they've done well to get him there. I mean, Chris Wokes um, also potentially may not be part of the you know the World Cup squad, so that kind of gives him a free window and kind of a free runway to be available for the entire tournament. So I think that also plays in his favour as against, say, someone like uh, Sam Curran. All right, uh, Tom, very quickly, tell us what Punjab are looking for here. Essentially on two bowlers who are certainly handy with the bat in Harshal and uh, Chris Wokes. Uh, they already have a pretty, uh, pretty solid overseas contingent with Besto, Livingston, Sam Curran and Rabada. You throw in Ellis and Raza there too. But uh, Harshal Patel, Chris Wokes, Punjab shopping for bowling essentially? certainly have been today but i think they, they they need to find um which will happen later in the auction um a a good replacement in in the middle order for shara khan who they released so i think they'll definitely want to keep um you know a, a fair bit of the purse for that opportunity to to, to buy a batter but uh you know that so far they've done pretty well they've got an experienced bowler they've got a good backup bowler in chris wokes who's also sort of renowned as a terrific team man. So he'll he'll create a, you know, obviously a, a, um, a good relationship with the group there. There's a connection there as well with Travis ba Trevor Bayless, former England coach. He knows obviously Chris Wokes through his time with, uh, with the uh, England team. So, you know, so far they've done pretty well, but I think their priority now is really, is, is trying to find a, um, a, a quality domestic bat and uh, and possibly they've got one final overseas spot left. Um, you know, you might look uh, at, uh, at a batter. Hmm. All right, Tom Murray, thanks for thank you for that. We will hear more from you in a little while from now. As we just confirmed, the two signings uh, for Punjab or the two buys, Harshal Patel at just under twelve, and uh, Chris Walks just a little over four. Right, we now uh, are trying to take stock of what has happened and see if Cummins went for twenty. Does that mean Starks is going to go for 25, like 22? Or does that mean, no, we got this wrong, the big money's been spent and Stark may not. And he's coming up, what, Dustin, in the next set or the one after that? Yeah, yeah, but there's still a couple of teams with big budgets. There's still Gujarat and KKR yeah. who have the money. And that's what ultimately matters. I mean, Gujarat are sitting on well over 30 crores. Mm. So they can easily spend more than 20 on Stark and KKR also have that budget. So... There'll be less teams involved. Like with Cummins, there were four teams. With Stark, it may just be two teams, but they can also go to more than 20. Yeah, this, this is what's happened after the 10 team auction, hasn't it? The, we will see all these records now if we bring up the most expensive buys from, say, 2021 yeah. onwards in the next few years. Because here you've had 20 crore shell with two teams who are almost exhausted now. And then we come to. Uh, and then we come to. Uh, uh, two more teams and yeah, Stark could still, so we may very well, Shashank, have two players 
that go for 20 crore plus at the same auction. Yeah, you've had uh, auctions where two players have gone for 16 plus. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, with the budgets that KKR and GT have, I'm sure KKR still don't have a bowling attack to speak of, except for two uncapped Indian fast bowlers. So, they definitely need a fast bowling attack uh, to complement a, a gun spin attack. So, yeah, I, I mean, they're not, definitely not going to go for uh, Lockie because they've just released him. Yeah. So, you've got someone like Matt Henry, who they can potentially look at, mm. or maybe Mitchell Stark. And among the two, who would you pick to go for the bigger sum? I mean, it's no a no-brainer there. Stark, for sure. So whether whether it's going to be twenty, I mean, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, he'll he'll probably come close to twenty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you want to count, you can. <clears throat> excuse me. You can put there that KKR and uh, GT rightly have in excess of thirty. GT is like thirty-seven. Exactly. Point six five crore left, right? So they've got a serious amount of money. Uh, thirty-two for KKR. You want to throw in Delhi Capitals, who've got a little over twenty-four. Uh, and RCB, who we have already seen, are willing to spend 20 out of their 23 crore on one player. And if that player was Pat Cummins, maybe they'll still be ready for that kind of mm. high-risk, high-stakes gamble where they can spend 20, 21 crore, even though they still have a lot of work to do. Clearly, CSK, uh, Mumbai, we knew anyway, Rajasthan, SRH. SRH have ruled themselves out of Stark, which I find mm. interesting. But they guess they already had two left-arm seamers. Uh, could they have been better served with Stark? Is there, are they possibly really looking for a captain here? Vasim or Dusan, Jaden Makram, they'll stick with. Yeah, I think uh, you could see Pat Cummins uh, being the captain there. Uh, mm. Now that they bought him at that price, uh, they have to play him. And they can't... Uh, uh, now that they've got Travis Head as well, uh, they will probably start with Travis Head and Klaassen. And Pat Cummins and Hasaranga, that's the four overseas that I see. And you could see Pat Cummins being captain there. Mm. All right. Uh, anyone, if you're to pick... Cummins or Makram, who should captain Sunrises? I think Makram struggles to get into the 11 right now. To yeah. be honest. With the number yeah. of, not because he's yeah. not a good player, but yeah. there's so many overseas options. Yeah. I think Cummins, now that you've spent this money on him, I do, I agree with Vasim. I think we might see an announcement very soon mm. from SRA. They've got really settled top three. I mean, they've got Mayank Agarwal, uh, Abhishek Ed, Sharma, Ed, yeah. and Rahul Tripathi. So if yeah. they fit in Travis Head top of the order, then uh, I wonder. Where does a three-party bat, where does, yeah. you know, who bats at number four? Well, I, I think they'll have to make a call and pick one of Mayank and Abhishek yeah. to start with. I don't, I just cannot see them not play Travis Head, at least to start. Mm. And They're then, also... what does that leave with your middle order? Because Heinrich Klassen is the highest profile middle yeah. order T20 player in the world. Talking about social media chatter, one of the other chatters that n hasn't got much traction lately is, there's been potential talk of Mayank Agarwal being involved in a trade to KKR and it died down a little while ago, but wonder if they'll still be interested. Yeah, and if the they are, happen. then Sunrisers will be in a very good position to trade Mayank Agarwal because they've got the top top order sorted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's also a good point. Uh, so keep an eye out on just how things develop after the auction too, when the trading window resumes uh, or is opened, reopened again. Uh, as far as some of the, you could now call them budget buys almost because we're seeing crazy numbers. But Gerald Kutsia has an IPL home in the form of the Mumbai Indians at 5 crore. They had a good World Cup. Firdos Munda joins us, South Africa correspondent for ESPN Cricket Info, to just perhaps give us her uh, her reaction on Kutsia going to MI, which, of course, have a South African connection for those don't there. Good to see you, good to have you. Thoughts on uh, Gerald Kutsia going to Mumbai Indians and joining the likes of Mark Boucher and Devil Brevis? Sorry about that. <laughs> you mentioned maybe a, a budget buy, but uh, five crore is uh, almost 10 million South African rand. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a great payday for, for Gerald Kutsia. Uh, that's a lot of money uh, here at home. I'm sure he'll be thrilled with that. And it's interesting to see that Mark Boucher has picked him up because he does seem to have an affinity for some of the younger South African players. You mentioned Diavolt Brevis is also part of that Mumbai Indian squad. I guess the one concern if we can put it that way although south africa don't play that much bilateral cricket is you know someone like a gerald kutsia is is really about to be first choice in terms of the test team um and rick Nokia is still injured and we don't know what the timeline on his comeback is so gerald kutsia is very important to south africa from an international <laughs> cricket perspective and they would really hope that he doesn't pick up anything once he's over there, you know, mm. any kind of niggle. We've seen what's happened with Nokia, for example, and South Africa just can't afford for that to happen ahead of the, the T20 World Cup next year. Yeah, and we were just having quite an interesting discussion here for those 
uh, which is indirectly related to one of South Africa's key players as well. Kutsia goes to Mumbai. But with the acquisition of Pat Cummins to Sunrisers at 20 plus crore, they've also got Travis Head there. There's a strong affinity to the Australian World Cup winning team with Dan Vittori there as head coach. But we were wondering whether now Cummins is the smarter choice to be made captain. And I wonder what that would do for Aidan Markram, who, of course, will defend the SA20 title in just a little while from now in South Africa. How important that season could be to help them decide. Uh, Dustin, sitting here, you know Dustin, and how he likes to just wind you up. He says, Markram doesn't make this team. So we're looking at the overseas players. There's uh, Glenn Phillips and Heinrich Klassen. You can't possibly see a lot of them playing now. But Cummins, Head, Hasaranga, you almost see them getting in. But thoughts on whether Markram will be able to hold on to his Sunrisers captaincy, at least in the IPL? Yeah, I heard you guys uh, discussing that, and I thought that was a little bit harsh, that uh, Markham doesn't even make the 11. Remember, he also adds a little bit of a spin option, and I know you're going to laugh at me now and say, oh, we don't want to talk about spin options. We've got more than an... Yeah, yeah, I won't laugh. I won't <laughs> laugh at her. But uh, that's the that's what she gets for bringing up Markram's bowling as a reason um, to keep him in the eleven. Phil, those I've got you back. <laughs> I've got you back. We lost you for a second, but uh, oh, thankfully sorry. we've got you back. But yeah, keep, carry on. Yeah, I was just saying that uh, Markram is also South Africa's T Twenty captain, so his leadership is, I guess, one of the reasons that that he gets into into the team as well. I do know that they've spent that huge amount of money on Pat Cummins, so you can't spend that money and then not play him. And I heard you guys saying that perhaps it would be the captaincy option. I mean, it it would seem to me quite harsh, given Markram's success in the SA Twenty, that he again gets axed as captain and and misses out um, on the 11, but they've got such a good, strong contingent of overseas players there. You mentioned Glenn Phillips, Travis Head, Hasaranga. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. They, they spoiled for choice. Personally, I, I think that Markham should stay in the 11. He offers a lot in terms of his captaincy, his maturity. He's a good number three, number four batter as well. Uh, I don't know how you'd fit them all in. I'm not, uh, you know, with the ins and outs of how they're going to make that squad work. Uh, but if it's Markram and Cummins, given that they've spent all that money on Cummins, you would think that Travis Head would also play. I mean, does Heinrich Klaassen miss out? Or have I said some sort of blasphemy? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Markram won SAT 20, Cummins won the World Cup, so very similar. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, it's our World Cup. SA 20 is our World Cup, hey? Yeah. That's, uh, since South Africa haven't won a World Cup, but... I mean, the SA20, Ronak, sorry, you, you asked the question, will the SA20 be very important for Markram in the IPL? And I think the answer to that has to be a definitive yes, because he leads that Sunrisers Eastern Cape side, which doesn't have a lot of big superstars. You know, they won the tournament last year with some guys a lot of people hadn't heard of. Adam Rossington was among among their team. Rulof van der Merwe, who won't be playing this season. People have heard of him, but he's not necessarily an out-and-out -out superstar. So Markram is able to... Uh, galvanize that kind of output, you know, and, and really get them to work well together. And I think if he if he has another good SA20, you know, how, how are they going to ignore him for the IPL? Mm, all right. Well, for those, before I let you go, uh, give us your two bits on what we can expect from a South African point of view. Uh, we have uh, the likes of Tristan Stubbs and Tabrez Shamshi coming up. They could be of interest to franchises. There's Riza Hendricks a little later too, Razi van der Dusen. None of these players have actually found a long run at IPL franchises, even if they've been part of them in the past. But players that you think are going to be of interest uh, to the IPL franchises in what's already been a pretty crazy auction? Yeah, I'd like to think that Riza Hendricks is going to attract some interest because he had that fabulous run of 450s in a row and 750s in 12 innings in T20 cricket. Didn't get a place at the T20 World Cup squad last year. We're expecting him to play a really big role in that format at next year's T20 World Cup. I guess the issue, uh, much like we saw in the WPL, which Amari Atapacho didn't get picked up, is that there's so many good opening batters that, uh, you know, do the franchises have room for someone like Riza Hind? But, but for a guy who's spent so much time just plugging away, putting in all the hard work and taking absolutely every opportunity that he gets, uh, it would be great for him to get a chance. You mentioned that Tavares Shamsi, and uh, I think if there's one thing the IPL can do for someone like him is, is give him consistency of opportunity, which he doesn't always get. So I'd like to see him, him get a, a spot there. Um, I don't know if, if someone, you know, there's so much talent in, in terms of spin in India that maybe he won't 
get a look in. And then Tristan Stubbs, the most expensive player in the SA20 last season and uh, a really strong middle order batter. He hasn't had a good run internationally, Tristan Stubbs, so he needs quite a lot of time. Interestingly, he's in South Africa's test squad to play India, which starts uh, next week. And I think they're trying to groom Tristan Stubbs as an all-format batter. So if he gets picked up and he gets opportunity there, uh, it would be really good. But uh, my personal hope is that Risa Hendricks uh, enjoys a good payday out there. Well, after, after a patient pause once the auction resumed, Tristan Stubbs is the first name out from the next set. Uh, for those, so why don't you hang on for just a couple of minutes to see where uh, this takes us. It seems like at 50 lakh, uh, the Delhi Capitals are interested. We know they are in the market for a keeping option. We haven't seen a lot of Stubbs keeping in the IPL. But uh, they did let go of Phil Sol. There is There are question marks around Risha Pant, which we have discussed. So it is Stubbs going to the Delhi Capitals at his base price of uh, 50 lakhs, where he left some company in the form of Andrik Nokia, Lungi Ngidi. Uh, they let go of Riley Russo, of course, did uh, the Delhi Capitals. But Stubbs makes the move from Mumbai to Delhi. So for those, Tristan Stubbs picked up. Uh, that's the second IPL franchise. Yeah, it's, it seems like he's he's gone for a, almost like a bargain there. I have to like quickly compute in my head what 50 lakh is in rands, but uh, I, I don't know that. I'm sure he would have been expecting a little bit more, especially after going for, was it 13 million South African rands in the SA20, which is obviously uh, a huge amount of money. I, I wonder if Tristan Stubbs will get much game time. That I think will be very important to see because he's a young player. He maybe struggles a little bit for confidence when he's not getting it right. And recently we've seen him struggle on the international stage. But when he does get it right, it's explosive. We know that he's got a lot of talent, very, very strong down the ground, very strong on the leg side as well. Uh, yeah, great for him, I, I guess. And you also mentioned the Delhi Capitals there and Anrik Nokia. And, and just a reminder that uh, we don't really have a timeline on his recovery um, as he recovers from a lower back stress fracture. All right. Uh, Firdos Munda, South Africa correspondent, he has been Rigenfo. Thank you very much for your time and your thoughts. We will try and get you back at some point later in the day. But uh, uh, that was great insight on Gerald Kutsia, on Aidan Markram, and on Tristan Stubbs, who has now been uh, moved to the Delhi Capitals. As the keeper set goes up, it's almost like it's just an appetizer to what is to come. The hell will be unleashed when the fast bowler set comes our way. Still got Wasim, Shashank, Dustin with me here in the studio. Now, uh, the keepers, we've seen Stubbs go. I, interesting that he's in this keeper set. But to Delhi, KS Bharat to Kolkata, called up recently to join the Indian team after Ishan Kishan's absence. I wonder if you can tell me more about that as to why Ishan Kishan's away. But uh, uh, KS Bharat going to KKR, who definitely needed a keeper in their session. Yeah, they needed someone because they only had Ramanullah Gurbaz. And, you know, if they're looking at building a, you know, superstar bowling attack and yeah. getting in one of Stark or Cummins, and now we know Cummins is not there and probably they'll go for Stark, then it's possible that Ramanullah Gurbaz wouldn't have been a definite starter. So they definitely... Uh, needed an Indian keeper. K.S. Bharat has got that experience of, uh, you know, being an India player now, so he becomes uh, a vital commodity for them. Uh, he's now been called up to the Indian squad, has had a brief uh, career so far in Test cricket, has lost his place in the team to Ishan Kishan. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was with RCB, uh, you know, but it wasn't a very, very uh, uh, favourable stint, except that one game where against the Capitals, he hit a last ball six against Avesh Khan to win them the game. So that's his lasting memory of the IPL. Otherwise, yeah. there's very little to speak about in terms of data, in terms of numbers. The one thing, though, with KS Bharat is he's a very, very good wicketkeeper. So if uh, and uh, if um, Eden Gardens is going to be a spin-friendly track, then you need someone really solid mm. behind the stumps to uh, keep to some terrific bowlers, Sunil Narayan, for example. So I think it's a very, very good buy uh, at 50 lakh. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because you would think Gurbaz would have earned his stripes to start, but was him if... If Gurbaz does not uh, perform to his potential, you are going to have to look to make two changes, which is the problem KKR had last year too. I think they even tried Jagadishan at mm. one point. They've tried a number of Indian options, just not quite worked for them. But Bharat at least still finds uh, a franchise in KKR. It's an important season for somebody like him. It could very well be forgotten ahead of the big auction otherwise. Yeah, yeah uh, I think uh, it's a good franchise for him. Uh, if he bats at five, six, seven, then I, I don't think that's that's his position. Uh, but I think, like uh, you know, Shashank said, you need a good keeper keeping to those uh, good spinners, uh, Nara and and uh, Varun. So I think uh, it, it's it's such an important season for him. Uh, and if I'm found a, a franchise now, which is good.
All right. Well, KKR, I have still to play their aces, you'd think. They came with a lot of money. They still have a lot of money. They've just picked up uh, a couple of players so far. Uh, Karthik Ayer has managed to dig out uh, a KKR fan as well, a very special KKR fan, whose interest would certainly be in what his team does with the fast bowler set coming up. Karthik, over to you, my friend. Redathon, we still had it, and I've got Rishabh with me. Rishabh is wearing purple, the color of his favorite franchise, Kolkata Knight Riders. Hello, Rishabh. Hi. You said you have a favorite back at KKR. Who is he and why? Yeah, so I guess this season should be the KKR season because we have the OG Gambhir back in the camp. Uh, this time as a mentor, we all know that he made uh, KKR win the title back in 2012 and 2014. And uh, this time, he is mentoring the team. So I guess this should be the KKR season. But that said, I guess the team needs a lot of improvements. So I have a question for Vaseem Jaffer, sir, that as a mentor, should Gambhir suggest the team that uh, they should focus on the pace attack of the team as we are lacking many pace bowlers in the team. Okay, so should KKR go for a pacer then, overseas or Indian? Rana and Vaseem, back to you. Thanks, guys. Let's let Vaseem answer the question there. Uh, yep, yeah, pace, yeah, pace yeah, I think they need to they need to have good pacers because when Gambhir was captain, uh, they had decent uh, pace bowling attack, uh, but they let go of so many fast bowlers. They've only got a couple of uh, uncapped bowlers. They've got strong spin attack. But yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, gaps to be filled, especially in pace department. They've got their batting sorted out. Uh, it's the bowling, especially pace bowling, that they need to sort out. All right. Uh, well, as that set continues to move on, uh, just to wrap things up from the keeper set, Josh Inglis has gone unsold, which surprises me a little bit. Had a lovely uh, innings just at the right time, you thought, with 100 in the T20Is that followed the World Cup. He's a World Cup winner too. High base price, though at 2 crore. English unsold surprises me. Does it surprise anyone else here that no one thought Josh English would I be a I think the value? general uh, thinking on keepers is mm. day, these days is that we'll just give a batter the gloves. Yeah. So keepers aren't really that much at a premium. So yeah, 2 crores is probably a bit too high of a yeah. base price. I would have been interested to see had it been, say, 50 lakh, whether English would have gone uh, in it. With Josh, uh, Josh English, uh, 2021, the season where the IPL was uh, halted midway because of the pandemic and then towards the end of April, uh, Royal Challengers Bangalore had an injury concern and they have Josh English and uh, the contract was on the way and, you know, they nearly signed the paperwork mm. and then the next day the tournament gets uh, postponed uh, to uh, Dubai for six months and then when the tournament returned, the injury concern no longer exists so the contract doesn't come in so Josh English, nearly uh, the IPL player, that story kind of continues. Yeah, yeah. Two years ago, didn't get a bid because of that. Now here he is again. Very interesting. Very interesting, but we, we never know. He could pick up uh, some space later on when the accelerated round comes in, when teams have uh, done most of their shopping and still want to pick up a player of international experience and pedigree uh, as part of the World Cup winning squad. Right. Lockie Ferguson has gone unsold, which is quite uh, interesting. He is nursing his way back from injury right now, but at a base price of 2 crore, one of the high-priced pacers in the last few years of the IPL. was him no love for Lockie Ferguson. Thoughts? Yeah, surprised. He didn't have a very good IPL last season. He was a little expensive, uh, but I think he'll he'll find takers in, in the next, probably, round. Yeah. Uh, but again, he's his bowler of pedigree, bowls at 145 clicks. <laughs> New rule of two bounces could be handy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the set now that is of great interest with uh, Mitchell Stark featuring so too Josh Hazelwood, whose availability has, of course, been reported on. And Alzari Joseph is currently being bid on quite fiercely. Surprise release from the Titans in the eyes of many and now already touching five crore with the Super Giants having shown up to the party. We knew that they didn't have a lot to do with the squad that we showed you, but they're very much interested, as are the Delhi Capitals, as Tom Moody joins us. And we just uh, carry on the conversation, Tom. Uh, take me through the um, lack of bids uh, at all for Lockie Ferguson at a base price of 2 crore. And uh, no surprises that somebody like Alzari Joseph is commanding quite a significant bidding war. It's already up to 6 crore as I throw this question to you. Yeah, it certainly uh, is no surprise that uh, Azari Joseph is attracting, um, you know, the, the bids that he is. He's high pace. He can get it up to high 140s. And now with this, you know, new bouncer rule, uh, it suddenly 
is a little bit more appealing to have that extra bit of uh, pace in your squad. Very surprised about Lockie Ferguson. I agree with Wazim uh, that he will get picked up in the accelerated stage. But, um, you know, to me, you know, I suppose just taking the plunge now, uh, I'm sure there's a couple of teams uh, have regretted not, you know, pressing the button or putting up the paddle uh, for Lockie Ferguson right now because he's going to be a lot more expensive than two crore when he comes back. Yeah, I'm interested to know, Tom, what would have prompted the delay? I mean, you think you look around the table and you think, is someone going to go for it? And you say, well, why not? Why not try and steal him? What would have prevented a number of the franchises who are all looking for overseas fast bowlers to say, yeah, let's, let's, let's give this a shot? And why does everyone sort of get wary for, for a bid like that? Yeah. Well, just to give you a simple example, you, you, if, if you're looking for an overseas fast bowler, you have an order of preference. Uh, so maybe your preference might be Stark, it might be Azari Joseph and then Ferguson in third place. And depending on when your name gets taken out, uh, pulled out in that round, really depends on your decision making. So, you know, you don't want to sort of jump, you know, in at Ferguson when Azari Joseph or Stark have yet to be presented to the market. So it's a bit of a tricky one with mm. regards to the timing of when you come on. Yeah, yeah, this is where we go back to that. If Lockie came in last, maybe in this set, he would have had some interest. What are we on, Dustin, for uh, Alzari? I think it's nine and counting, as I just yeah. confirmed. Nine crore, Alzari Joseph. And I'm just going to try and go back to what he was at with the Titans uh, all this while. Uh, Alzari Joseph was... Does anybody remember what Alzari was on? Just trying to... Ah, there we are, 2.4. So it's a four-time, nearly five-time pay hike for the West Indies fast bowler. It's interesting that he got released. We were surprised, but now clearly Alzari has benefited immensely from the auction. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's an IPL winner. He won yeah. it with them two seasons ago and played a pretty important role. Last season, his spot kind of got taken by Josh Little. And I think that's why Titans released... Sorry, let me, let me just correct the number. 1150. Yeah, 1150 and huge. counting. Yeah, but it makes sense just because, our, I mean, who are the teams bidding for him? It looks like LSG RCB. and RCB. LSG and RCB, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, RCB are kind of getting desperate now because they need a Hazelwood replacement. And then, mm. yeah, I guess. Yeah, we remember they, 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 they really probably start. need a uh, backup to Mark Wood. We've discussed that. So, yeah. yeah. So that must be. This is, this is quite a significant chunk of the LSG purse, though, isn't it? I think it was. Uh, 13.15 crore, and we are at 11.5 for uh, for Alzari Joseph. And finally, the bidding has come to an end. So there was an applause, and at 11.5 crore, Alzari Joseph will head to the Chinnaswamy uh, to bowl in the deaths over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah not good a great, luck. Not a great ground, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they went nearly 20 for Cummins, didn't they? Yeah, RCB. So 11.5 Alzari to uh, to Bangalore. Thoughts, Wasim, on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, they, they kind of got desperate, I would say. Mm. Uh, you know, if, if at all they went 20 crore, they should have gone for Mitchell Stark as well. They should have yeah. you know, kind of... But, I mean, that that pretty much takes them out of the Stark race now. Yeah, yeah. So they, done. Need to, yeah. they need to look for another replacement, maybe Lockie, maybe even Matt Henry when he comes in. So it's interesting. Yeah, uh, makes sense of it, Tom. They were willing to go up to 20 for Pat Cummins. They went 11 and a half, got Alzari. Could they have waited and shown the same appetite for Stark? Or do you sense this is a good signing for RCB who do definitely need fast bowling? I think they were desperate to pocket a fast bowler as quick as possible. Otherwise, it was only going to get harder and harder uh, in, a comp in a competitive market. Um, they went hard for Cummins. They, there's no guarantee they can get Stark because uh, there'll, be there'll be an appetite for Stark. And that they're limited with their salary cap. And that's all down to the trade with Cameron Green. Um, so, you know, they're, they're in a bit of a pickle um, with regards to building uh, a, 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 a bowling attack that can deal with the Chinnaswamy, which is a historical problem. Does he become a starter now? I mean, at that price, at times, the decision is taken out of the hands of, of at least the start of the season, Tom. But you've got Fav Duplessis, the captain, you've got Glenn Maxwell and Cameron Green. Is Alzari Joseph your fourth first choice to overseas player now? Well, I, I think it's not so much down to the, the price he's, he's uh, come at. I think that they do need a, a fast bowler and he's the one that's, um, you know, in front of the queue at the moment. But that's not saying that, 
you know, as uh, the auction unfolds, that they don't pick up Lockie Ferguson for two or three craw to add to that fast bowling, um, you know, battery. So, you know, he'll have to be in form and fit uh, to get his opportunity, but he's he's certainly uh, gone a long way towards getting an opportunity to play in the in the, in the starting 11. Mm, I mean, we, we never quite know whether a player returns to the auction at times at his own behest after talking to franchises, because we were looking at Gujarat and saying, oh, the Titans shouldn't have released him, you know, at a little over 2.5 crore, 2.8 crore, whatever I said it was. Yeah. And now he's got a six times pay yeah. hike. Uh, because as we speak, Umesh Yadav is at 5.5 crore. Uh, and the Titans are very much involved in this. So, too, were Sunrisers first and now I think the Delhi Capitals. So, Umesh Yadav's enjoying a good payday. But I guess now you'd think that maybe the Titans wanted to keep Alzari. There's a very good chance the player might have wanted to go into the auction because his price has just gone through the roof. Yeah, I mean, I, whatever chances he got uh, <clears throat> at Titans, I think he did well. Uh, again, uh, we mentioned that because of Hardik Pandya's situation, Josh Little took his place. Uh, but again, he's a fine bowler. Uh, they've got Reese Topley as well at, at RCB. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if he's going to be a starter at the first, uh, but uh, he'll be happy. Yes. Umesh Yadav will be happy. Six crore, lovely man. Umesh Yadav has got new life in his IPL career. Uh, but what's the story on Umesh? What's he been up to? He's obviously not part of India's plans uh, right now, uh, Shashank. But at 5.8 crore and counting, is Umesh Yadav still putting in the ads? Yeah, he's been a busy uh, cricketer. He was uh, over in the UK playing county cricket, uh, came back in, played the uh, Vijay Hazare and the Mushtaq Ali for Vidarbha. I mean, Vidarbha didn't uh, do too well, but I mean, he was right. He played every game for uh, across uh, both the tournaments. Uh, his economy rate in the Mushtaq Ali was very good this time around. Uh, closed out a couple of games for them, defending runs, 20-odd runs in the last two overs. So, uh, he's had a history of uh, coming in and playing cricket continuously, so that kind of helps yeah. um, because these tournaments are closely watched by uh, scouting managers sure. and coaches. So I think that's played a big role. He's fit. Um, one of the very fittest uh, Indian cricketers, yeah, even though always, he's 35. Always, yeah. Just, so just I think all these factors... But yeah, 5.8 crore final price. Umesh Yadav goes to the Titans. So you were mentioning their scouting being busy and perhaps attending these tournaments too. And he's going to bowl potentially alongside Mohamed Shami now at uh, at the Gujarat Titans. Good old pace attack, throwback to a few years back of Shami and Umesh bowling and together. And Mohit Sharma. And Mohit Sharma. Yeah. I'm yeah. surprised KKR let him go though. I mean, yeah. you know, they, they obviously held on to only 12 or 13 players uh, and somebody of Indian, or obviously Indian player, to let go, somebody who's done so well, mm. possibly Maharashtra uh, because because of the elections yeah. and all that, uh, he could be really handy. Yeah. 2015 World Cup attack. I was just has reunited. Say, yeah. The yeah. Titans. Nine years later. So good for them that they're still going. Yeah. Nine. Absolutely. And they all assemble under the uh, uh, very able tutelage of Ashish Nehra. So uh, there we have it. The Titans have been dare I say, a little print in the way they spend their money. They've but not they've been, been very focused on going for yes. an Indian seamer because they bid around 10, I think, for Harshal, or they went Correct. right till the end for Correct. Harshal. And then they said, that's it, because I think they yeah. keep that for Stark, and they wanted one Indian seamer. Because they've let go of Yash Dayal, and if you remember last year, I think in the qualifying... Even Pradeep Sangwan has been let go of. They yeah. played Darshan Nalkande, which yes. was a surprise pick, and then he didn't do well, so they wanted that Indian seamer who they've yeah, the housing situation doesn't help. But Tom, very interesting looking at the Titans who came into this auction with the most money and you made quite uh, what looks like a, a prediction that's aging very well. They might very well leave the auction with the most money too. They've got a lot, a lot of money there. And if, like Dustin points out, they were in the bid for a long time with Harshal Patel. They've now picked up Umesh Yadav and Omar Zai. Uh, what do you, how do you describe the Titans auction approach so far? Well, I think it's been very good. Uh, they've got obviously a load of money still to spend. Um, I, th I think they'll be trying to pick up um, uh, Mitchell Stark. I think as part of their their plan. I don't. I don't think they're seeing Josh Little as their leading overseas pace bowler. He's more of a, a quality backup pace bowler. Uh, but you know, they, they do things uh, in. Not an unpredictable, not in an unpredictable way, but they don't do uh, what you'd expect them to do. And I remember only two years ago when they first were introduced into the into the IPL at the end of that very first auction, after being a new team, a new you know, new support team at the auction table, everyone was a little bit uh, puzzled with a, a yes. lot of their choices and how how late they left a lot of their choices. 
you know, history will tell you that we're all bad judges because that you know they won the first year and came second in the next. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, we were looking at that Titans team, wondering what are they doing, where is their batting, and uh, they've proven a lot of us wrong. And now it's almost CSK esque. They they surprise us with what they do. And yet you feel confident that this could be smart. They're almost developing their reputation. No, clearly the coaches, it's very CSKS because clearly the coaches get the best out of 30 plus slightly older players. David Miller, if you remember when he came yeah. to Titans, people were thinking he's not really been great in the I'm IPL and suddenly yeah. they transformed him. I'm looking at the names. Vijay Shankar is another yeah, guy. Ridhiman Last Saha at the group. top. Yeah. Ridhiman Saha, Mohit Sharma. Who thought Mohit Sharma sure. would have the kind of season? So maybe Devatia. they'll turn Omesh Yadav yeah, into. Yeah. Yeah. Devatia, they've transformed as well. He's not. Uh, a spring chicken either, but yeah, uh, that's that's interesting what we're looking at. And there's still a lot of money in that Titans purse, so Mitchell Stark will be of interest. As of now, another player that uh, the Titans were interested in, Shiva Mavi, who uh, was at six crore with them last year, has just got a pay hike. So we haven't seen a lot of Shiva Mavi. I think there was one series he was called up for the Indian team. We don't know if he got a cap, but Shiva Mavi at now 6.5 crore. Shashank, what's the Shiva Mavi story? What's he been up to? And this is. Uh, does this bid or this high, this price hike, surprise you in any way? Uh, very, very surprising, and it's. Uh, I think it's a risky bid as well because Shiva Mavi is currently recovering from a stress fracture on his back. He hasn't played any cricket uh, recently. He was called into the Indian team for the Asian Games, but obviously was withdrawn from that because mm. of the injury. So the injury is fairly recent. Hasn't played a part in the domestic tournaments. So, uh, there's very little in terms of cricket that he's played over the last uh, six months. Yeah. So, in terms of that, and he's also had a very bad history of injuries. Correct. You look at a bowler's, um, uh, you know, injuries. Track record, yeah? Yeah, track record. He's got a back injury, he's got a stress reaction, he's got an ankle injury, he's had a thigh injury, all in the space of five years since mm. he broke through uh, into the Under-19 World Cup. So, so, he's had all sorts of injuries that a fast bowler doesn't want to have. So, in that sense, I think it's a very risky buy. But uh, they hope that he's going to be fit. So, yeah, in that sense, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it can go either way. Sure. It, let me just get a quick comment from Tom Moody on Shiva Mavi, and then we'll come to the story of the day. Mitchell Stark has entered the auction. But on Shiva Mavi, uh, Tom, a little over 6 crore. What is it? 6.8, finally, I think. 6.4 going to the Super Giants. So, Super Giants who weren't supposed to have a lot to do here, but they had released Avesh Khan, traded him, and brought in Devdar Padikal. They were looking for an Indian seamer. Uh, your assessment of this, there are a number of seamers there that you have to keep looking at their fitness and their track record, Mohsen Khan being one of them, Mark Wood being another, and now they've added Shiva Mavi to the mix too. Your thoughts? Yeah, there's clearly a risk to this purely on the basis of the history of, of Mavi's injury track record. But I, I had Mavi down in my notes as um, a, a player that Lucknow will probably look for. Uh, I didn't expect them to be paying 6.4 for him. But that they needed, they need, they desperately needed a, a, a an Indian pace bowler given the trade that they had with Rajasthan and losing Avesh. So you know they've got uh, Marvi and they probably feel that uh, there's enough time between now and the start of the IPL that the stress fracture will be completely healed and uh, he'll be up, up and uh, back up and running. Okay, let's go to it then. The, the time for. Uh... Uh, speculation is over, and we very much are in the present. In the blink of an eye, Mitchell Stark has gone to 6.5 crore in the bid with the Mumbai Indians. When they enter a bid early, they tend to just keep the paddle up, right? That's just maybe the style that uh, Akash Ambani enjoys at these auctions. And he had a smirk on his face, almost one which uh, you can understand why, because he's expecting to be outbid at some point, and he's just saving himself and everyone else some time here. So he's saying, let's make it quick. Let's get it up to whatever MI have decided they can spend on. Uh, and yeah, you can almost read that uh, Mumbai I know they're fighting a losing battle here. Yeah, I mean, maybe they're just hoping against hope that suddenly somebody pulls out of the bid. But I think Mumbai have only about, what, 12 or 13 crores left. So, they're going to be out of this pretty soon. And then I expect GT will wait to see what happens with yes. all the other bids and then suddenly step in. That's what will probably happen, I would say. Yeah, I mean, funny things have happened in uh, life, uh, haven't they? Rishabh Pant is raising the paddle himself for the Delhi Capitals. Uh, but there's no way, there's no way... Mitchell Stark's going at less than 12 crore, is he, Tom? He's at 8.8, .8, make that 9. And there's no way he's going to join just Preet Bumrah <laughs> and bowl alongside him for the <laughs> Mumbai Indians. Well, you never, you never say never, but I, I, I'm anticipating he's going to be 
Um, there's going to be a few other teams coming in for Mitchell Stark after this initial wave of bidding. Mm. Uh, there's no doubt that he offers an, uh, an appetising um, option for you, given his skill with the new ball up front. He's, his strike rate's quite extraordinary with that new ball in power play, and he's also someone you can rely upon at the, the end of the innings, which is also important in, in a, you know, most of the Indian grounds. Well, it seems to be a, a pause in uh, in the day, and I think that's exactly what's happening here. For a second, <laughs> the uh, the auction room with bated breath was thinking, <coughs> what is going on? Is no one going to outbid Mumbai and Starks at about nine, and then a new team has entered? Now, we know KKR would be uh, interested in one of their former players. Uh, we also know that Titans have the big purse. Someone is sitting back here like a boss, right? Someone sitting back thinking, let all this time pass happen, and we will come in and last minute take Mitchell Stark. Yeah, who is that possibly? The Titans have entered, right? And they have all the financial muscle. So too KKR, which is why I'm interested in yeah. how KKR went about their auction. Just remind me again, guys, of their cake of KKR's buy so far. Let's just have a look at it one more time, please. Uh, Starks gone through the roof already. 11.25, 11.5. I'll keep going. I think so, KKR have bought just Srikar Bharat, if I'm not mistaken. KS Bharat and yeah. The there was Sakarya and Bharat, right. So they still have a large chunk of their purse. Like these were the two teams you were expecting to go hard, right? So we need to keep an eye out. They have a lot of work to do. That's why I'm saying the, the strategy for KKR was they're going to have a lot of work to do. So can they really afford to go all out on one player? Because they will still, that's still, it's not the, they still have got boxes to tick. Uh, Shashank, as we recall, they came into this auction still needing 12 slots, uh, including four overseas. They will still need three overseas players, or they can have three overseas players, even if they can go to Stark. So what can they spend on Stark? I mean, I think they should hit a ceiling of about 15 or 16, because you still need a bit of a budget to get two or three mm. other uh, Indian bowlers, whether it's uncapped or capped in the... Uh, I mean, uncapped, most likely. So uh, you still have only one Indian left-arm seamer, along with the two that they have already. Yeah. Uh, so I think they'll probably have to you know, draw a line somewhere and not probably go like what RCB did yeah. earlier with uh, Pat Cummins. What is the line here, Vasim? Because GT, on the other hand, have already picked up Omar Zai at a base price of 50 lakh. They have one overseas slot left. Hmm. They could go all yeah. out. Can we can we, can we we assume that they can go all out? They picked up Umesh Yadav so far. But uh, can they go all out on Stark with a large part of this 36 crore or so they might be having right now? I think, yeah, I think GT... Uh, you know, most of their places are filled, so they they could go all out. Uh, and KKR can go up until 20, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll have to pull out because they need to fill in a lot of other spaces. So, GT probably has a stronger hand here. Yeah, see, it's a similar balance purse, Tom Moody's 31.85 crore to Titans and 31.7 crore to KKR. But this comes back to which team still has more work to do. Now, you think that the Titans still have to find a way to cope without Hardik Pandya? Pandey at this auction, but with the way they are going, do you sense they are still finding a new way to make their team stronger? And is this the team now that will get Mitchell Stark, given how much work KKR still have to do? There's no question that the Hardik Pandya um, exit is a significant blow to GT, but one thing that I've been thinking through over the last couple of days is that it is a significant blow, but <laughs> It's not as bad as it was previously, historically, because of this impact player rule, where you can you can really cover that all-rounders role and you can bat deep and bowl deep because of it. To me, GT and, and KKR for Stark, GT have got no reason why they shouldn't end up with him because they've got the money and they've got the slot available and they've got the need for an experienced match winner in, uh, in Stark. So... I'd be very surprised if GT pull out of the auction. I, I, I'm sort of envisaging they're going to be the very last one with a paddle up. 18 crore and counting, and it does seem like KKR are more concerned about the calculations here. Chandrakant Pandey, Venki Mysore, Gautam Kambir, all in attendance. On the other hand, Ashish Nera and Vikram Solanke are present for, uh, uh, for the Titans. They seem at ease here. They seem quite content. And this is, I think, if we have to make a prediction now, with Asarej going out of the game by picking up Cummins, it looks like it almost served on a platter Stark to Gujarat, didn't it? Yeah, that's what it seems like right now. I mean, uh, if he if he does go to KKR, it'll kind of be a um, kind of a 
circle of sorts because four years ago they picked him at the auction for like somewhat in the same range, uh, probably 15 or 15 and a half. And then before the 2019 World Cup, uh, Stark uh, conveyed to them that he wouldn't be available. So uh, they had to, you know, shop for someone else uh, and the replacement. Um, yeah, so as we speak, he's crossed the 20 crore barrier. I mean, uh, who expected yeah. that? We spoke about if the possibility of two of them going for 20. <clears throat> yeah. It's now happened. It's reality. Yeah, absolutely. 20 crore for two players at the same auction. The two <laughs> World Cup winners, Mitchell Stark and Pat Cummins, friends and brothers in, in different formats across the world with great success. For Australia, one of the few all-format fast bowlers that remain. So it's, it's anyway a dying breed or an endangered species, the all-format cricketer. Stark and Cummins picking and choosing how they balance their commitments for their national side versus uh, the appearances they make in the IPL. Stark has had no IPL cricket for seven plus years. He barely has played a T20 international in the last calendar year. And here he is now in the company of Pat Cummins. Now, 20.5 was Cummins, wasn't it? Yeah. Right? So one more bid and Mitchell Stark Mitchell Stark is the IPL's most expensive player ever. Pat Cummins' record lasts all of 42 minutes, and we now have Mitchell Stark making history. At 21 crore, we are still bidding Tom Moody. It's going to be a fun little night out from Stark and Cummins tonight. Perhaps they'll both take their own private jets and meet at some exotic island somewhere near your part of the world. Uh, I'll tell you what, it was, uh, it was always going to be high, but... Um, to have both of them over 20 is quite remarkable. I, I'm surprised with Cummins, to be honest with you, purely on the on the points I made earlier around his skill set. But Stark, I'm not surprised. And at this stage of the at, at the auction, as we've always said, it's not about what you need. It's not about sorry price. It's about what you need to be a complete 11. And for GT, Stark is that completion. <sighs> You know, if you ever grow up with those, like one of one close friend, two of you get together, and somewhere, even though you really love each other, you're always keeping an eye on how much that guy's making, and you know you want to try and make as much. Didn't we all have that one friend just I'd, to make sure? I'd love to be earning the kind of money where people clapped when people yeah. announced my salary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember the times where uh, at the auction? Remember 2009. When Peterson and Flinto went for one, went for 1.5, 1.6. Wow, it you know, seems that like a different like, era, doesn't that it? That seemed like lifetime. seems like a different uh, era altogether. Yeah. That seemed like massive at that point. That was about four crore. Here we're talking about five times the sum and counting, 20, 21. Now it's gone past 22. Oof. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, anything anyone predicted has completely been smashed out of the window. But we all thought 20. It's not, not quite. 22. I, I said something like this, actually, to be fair. What but, did you say? What was your prediction? I think um, I said 21.5, so it's beaten me by a bit. But but I, this is where KKR aren't... Now, GT have managed to take a huge uh, weight off them by going 22.50. Those 25 lakhs could be a huge difference here. Otherwise, KKR were willing to put uh, all almost 80% of their remaining purse, which will leave them with about 7 or 8 crore, but still almost 8, 10 slots to but fill. But they don't have to fill all the slots, right? Because that's the maximum. So yes, they can have a smaller squad. Usually, usually you would want... 18 to 20. And you would, you yeah. would consider uh, that you have to fill up all your overseas slots. Otherwise, it's, a, it's considered to be not smart auction dynamics. Not to also mention, a lot of their players are very injury-prone and uncertain. There's Andre Russell there, there's Neil Narayan there. Uh, you've also, you saw what happened with Shreya Sayer last year, and uh, Jason Roy, another player, you're not quite sure if you'll see him for a full IPL or not. they're thinking about just the 11, and then they'll right. manage some budget buys to fill yeah, up. Yeah, I think, I mean, can that be achieved in today's uh, day and age with all the workload we talk about, Tom? They've gone 23 and they're still... I think the bid is with KKR at 23. So, Titans are being forced to really uh, spend every penny that they possibly can. But KKR going at 23, is this smart or is this now getting silly? Um, I don't think it's silly. I think it, they feel confident that, you know, as the uh, auction unfolds and then you have the accelerated uh, auction at the end when you had all these unsolved um, players that are all still very good, uh, can they can, you know, build a strong bench around that. Again, sort of uh, worrying about m missing out on Stark and then having to find such a, well, fill a, a massive hole with uh, a high-quality fast bowler. Uh, the other thing I think uh, it's worth discussing at this point, Tom, is whether Mitchell Stark has 
multiple IPLs in him? Or is he simply worth being picked up now for what could very well be one year? We know he picks and chooses his cricket. How many more years of international cricket he has, I leave to you to, uh, to, to speculate upon. But whenever there's an Ashes, big World Cup, we know how stark and his priorities are. So is this a one-season investment or could it be more? I see this as a one-season uh, investment. They're, they're picking Stark or trying to pick Stark to win the IPL in 2024. Um, what happens after that, they have the flexibility or the option to, to consider. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you know, they're trying to pick a team to win uh, the very next IPL. And, you know, they've got the purse to be able to do it. Um, as I sort of alluded to at the beginning of our show, KKR, in my view, uh, had the hardest job to do in this auction, and now we're seeing it play out in front of our eyes because, you know, GT are in such a strong position where they can make it an absolute nightmare for them, which is happening right in front of our eyes. Yeah, and you can see that even now. It is... I, I've never seen concern show more uh, clearly. I don't... I've never played cards with Venki Mysore, and I would... I don't think I will with Gautam Gambhir, but... Uh, uh, you can tell they're not good poker faces. Titans, on the other hand, even if there is a discussion, because this must be exceeding whatever they would have budgeted for a Stark, it's still not bothering them. I think they've, they came into this with a pretty good team. They couldn't find replace Pandya, but they are finding strong ways to improve the squad in other areas. And at 24.5, the bids now moved back to Gujarat Titans. Uh, this could very well be the all-time highest bid for a long time to come. I'm trying to think of whether that's a safe thing to say. But given the uh, the extended purse, we must point out, the franchise were given 5 crore extra, right, Shashank? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you already he's already touched 25. So, yeah, it's a safe prediction to make that mm. probably it'll be an all-time uh, highest yeah. record for a while to come now. Next year is the mega auction, Correct. is what we told. So, and you're unlikely to see teams splurge that much just purely because, you know, yes. it's the unknown again, unless they, of course, retain him. But again, with Stark, uh, he's already made his intentions clear that he may potentially not have uh, too much of test cricket left in him. And it's probably a year or two. So so I think if he if if if, if he's going to come back next year, that's, that's a headache for next year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it well, almost seems as if KKR uh, decided that they'll go for him come what may, uh, because... Yeah, they've just... They've, they At, at 12.5, there was a long discussion. At 18, there was a long discussion. And they kept raising the paddle. And at 24.75, again, there was a long discussion. And they said yes. OK. Oh, I'm surprised a little bit, <clears throat> but also not surprised a little bit. At 24.75, Mitchell Stark returns to the Kolkata Knight Riders. Record by... Uh, but that leaves so many variables to the Knight Riders of the rest of their auction. The Titans eventually, Ashish Nehra, in his own typical fashion, said, fine, keep him. You've done everything you need to. You've bled from everywhere you possibly can. I'm not paying 25 lakh more to take him to 25 crore. At 24.75, Mitchell Stark, one of the trailblazing bowlers of his time, is also now the most expensive IPL player of all time. Uh, Tom Moody, you said you'd be surprised if the Titans caved. They've caved. And he goes to KKR at 2475. Thoughts? Yeah, he has caved, but I, I was not expecting it to go to 24.75. <laughs> um, yeah, look, I think at the end of the day, KKR didn't have a choice. Looking at their, their team and what they need, if they didn't get stuck, they're then sort of filling their squad full of players like what they've just had. So they've that they released. They were the team that released the most amount of players um, uh, before this auction. So therefore, they had to go in with a completely different strategy to reignite their hopes uh, for 2024. And part of that strategy was to have a top-class left-arm fast bowler. And Mitchell Stark, I think, on most people's um, uh, radar, was really the number one pick. And, um, you know, they wanted him and then they'll work around managing the, re the remainder of their uh, salary cap to fill in the important, uh, you know, holes, whether it be in the playing 11 or on the bench. 
Do you believe, Tom, that the what now has become clear is that KKR are happy to go in with a thin squad? They may not necessarily even fill their overseas quota or have as big a squad in terms of numbers. But I do know there's been a history of them having a strong 11, not necessarily a lot of uh, backup options. Do you sense that building as we just look at that squad one more time? There's still a lot to like in that squad. There's Shreya Sayer, who returns from injury. There's Sunil Narayan, who's still good enough. Andre Russell's playing for the West Indies again. Varun Chakravarti, Rinku Singh stocks are on the rise. But you add, and you can throw in Mitchell Stark in there now. Do you sense this is still a formidable squad, or is it still very on, on significantly shaky ground? Especially, you can never rule out an injury or two when it comes to players like Stark. Well, that concerns me is now they need the cover for Stark. They need the cover for Andre Russell because both historically have had their injury issues. Uh, Jason Roy is another one that's had injury issues over the last 18 months in his career. So, again, they may need to be considering, you know, one of those wicketkeeper batters that were passed in earlier in Phil Salt or Joss Inglis. Um, so they've still got some work to do, but they've got to be very clever with how they do it now because they're very much restricted financially. Tom Moody, thank you very much for your time. But for now, I'll give you a bit of a break. Uh, you can go count all the money that you've made, which is a lot more than franchises can <laughs> have purses to pay. So thank you very much, Tom. We'll see you again very soon. Uh, yeah, go on, go on, Tom. I'll give you that. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, no. The difference is that the, the money that I earn is monopoly money, not the real money like what's <laughs> happening today. You know what? I'd, I'd sleep better at night if this was monopoly money, right? It's just, this is incredible money. And well done to the players that are getting it. It's always good to see players make money. Uh, it's IPL's changed the entire dynamic of cricket over time because of this, and it continues to do so. Mind-boggling amounts of money being spent to Mitchell Stark. So let's get reactions from the panel here on whether this is the right franchise to have gone this for this kind of money. I think even if, if it was 25 crore and the Titans, I would have said that's that's fine. That's still really good money. Sunrisers went 20 for Cummins, so we can understand it. But KKR and Mitchell Stark, was he? Yeah, I think they needed pass bowling. Uh, you know, Mitchell Stark will strengthen their bowling attack. Uh, I think they need to be smart, uh, you know, how they go about for the rest of the auction. Uh, but it's a, it's a terrific buy for them, you know, mm -hmm. him along with the other Indian seamers, uh, along with their spin attack, uh, it's going to be a very strong lineup. So that we're looking at uh, Narayan, Chakravarti, Stark, Suyash, possibly Suyash, Suyash Sharma, Rana. Andre Chetan Russell. Harshitrana, probably. Yeah, Harshitrana, Chetan Sakar, Sakar is having some trouble at the moment as we speak with his action. We hope it gets sorted by then. Uh, yeah, you can see, without Stark, that doesn't quite have the same appeal as with Stark. Mm. Absolutely, it does. I mean, this makes it an all-round attack now. So it's just now a question of uh, trying to uh, build one or two or domestic all-rounders and they're fully set. I mean, last mm. year they had Venkatesh Iyer who couldn't bowl, so that was a bit of a limiting thing for them. And they didn't have Shreya Iyer, of course. Mm. Shreya Iyer is back, Venkatesh Iyer is bowling. They've built a solid attack. And as you said, I think because of the amount of money that they bid for Stark, they may not potentially go all out and fill up the squad completely. So you're looking at them having about 18 or 19, maybe. And yeah. I think they are okay with that now, with the strength that they've built. Yeah, I think, fingers crossed, they would really have that, fingers crossed, that most of their players are fit right through the season. They were going for Rovman Powell, though, I seem to remember. The first big bid. So, that means that they were looking for one overseas middle-order player. Now, they're probably not going to get, like, at least a Oh, they'll have to look for a budget somebody who's yeah, unsold yeah. and they'll yeah. bring him back later, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Uh, would you have pulled out if you were the Titans? Um, probably not, because just thinking about who the bowlers are left, mm. I mean, there, there isn't anybody else like a Stark, and they did have the budget, and they have pretty much all the other bases covered. Yeah, I and mean, they have only one overseas slot. Right? It's not like you could say, OK, instead of 25 yeah. for Stark, let's go to 10 for Lockie Ferguson and 10 mm. for 5 for exactly. XYZ, a second bowler, and say, between that, we've got two options instead yeah, of and one. Even in other slots, the only slot I can think that GT needs to fill is a good middle-order India batter, and there really isn't one in the auction. There's nobody... I mean, they have Vijay Shankar, Abhinav Manohar, Sai Sudarshan. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to find anybody else who necessarily is that much better than those Yeah, two. I mean, I, I actually thought they needed a little more assurance, insurance at the top of the order. Because I'm not sure of Saha and whether you need one more keeper. Matthew Wade, whether he... If he comes yeah. in, he upsets the overseas balance. He's a fine yeah. player. And if now. you have to play Saha, you have to play him up top. Yeah. You can't play him in number correct, seven. Correct, correct. So, you're, that, that kind of greatly limits them in that case. And if you have Kane Williamson as one of your overseas, 
that's a lot of players who want to bat at the top. Then Sai Sudarshan wants to bat up, Shubman Gill will bat up. So you want to then, if you're playing Williamson, you want the dispensable commodity there is Saha, and therefore I thought that they might look for a keeper. Maybe they'll pick up somebody a little later on, Josh Inglis perhaps, or another option. But that was one aspect. The other one was, like Wasim points out, whether Josh Little can lead this attack. They let go of Alzari Joseph. And therefore, I thought Stark was the obvious one. Yeah. Yeah. They, they should have gone a little harder, I feel. Yeah. You know, Our they've bodies. got all their bases covered. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I agree that they needed somebody to buy it. Six and seven, Shah Rukh Khan probably was, was that guy. Yeah. Uh, and they had the purse. So, they could have gone a little mm. harder. Let's be fair. Let's be fair. Also, I guess, uh, the fact remains that uh, they overachieved with their bowling. Their batting is very solid. But the the bowling with Mohit Sharma bowling the last over, nothing against Mohit Sharma. But that was a slot they struggled with. Yash Dayal, Mohit Sharma. It wasn't some... It is an area they needed. Now, imagine if you had Shami, Rashid Khan, Mitchell Stark with Umesh oh. Yadav as cover. Yeah. You know, you've covered for Hardik Pandya's absence. Now, I'm not quite sure whether any bowler they pick yeah. is quite the same. What's very interesting with GT is that it's not like they have some other overseas bowler they have in mind because if you notice, like, they didn't even just bid for Madhu Shankar who's just gone to MI for about 4.6. As I, think, I think they've got Matt Henry. Maybe in mind, yeah. yeah. Possibly that's the only other guy yeah. that they have in mind because they've not really even bid on that many of the other overseas options. So it seemed like they were saving everything for Stark but then they didn't get him and that's... So now, yeah, maybe maybe they get Matt Henry, but they'll end up getting him probably at a budget now. All right, let's 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 move forward while we're having this intriguing discussion. But it's all moot for the Titans. They've let it go, and KKR will have the services of Stark for the next IPL. In this conversation, uh, two left-arm seamers have gone to two franchises: Jaydev Unatkat to the Sunrisers at 1.6 crore, and Dilshan Madhushanka will play in the IPL as well. It's not often that Sri Lankan cricketers find an appetite from franchises, but given the history, Sri Lankan cricketers, uh, at least fast bowlers are bad. 4.6 crore is pretty good. Myla Jayavardhana is still around there. And Mumbai are making some Lasit great Malinga players. Lasit Malinga is there as well. Uh, Lasit Malinga is now there too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, let's bring, let's react to the Madhushanka one first. You have Berendorf there, you've picked up Kutsir, and now you've thrown in um, uh, Dilshan Madhushanka, in addition to the trade of Romario Shepard, who, like I pointed out, is now a specialist death bowler too. Dustin, you like this? You like what you're seeing? Yeah, I think they've got some really good budget by that. I, th I was expecting Kutsir to go for a lot more, considering how much Stark and Cummins have gone for. And even someone like Madhushanka, okay, it's not going to be first choice, but as a second option to a Berendorf. You've got now three really good overseas bowlers and you already had such a strong squad coming into the auction itself. So, I think Mumbai have picked up some very good budget buys in this auction. Would you would you agree with that, Vasim? Between Madhushanka and Kutsia that we are now seeing Mumbai cover bases and cover good bases? Yeah, I think, I think they've got good buys. Uh, you know, little under the radar, uh, not really high profile, but I think they'll come and do the job, uh, especially at that one credit stadium. Yeah, there's something said about Madhushanka's availability. I think there was something that Sri Lanka cricket had to just work on, if I remember reading that piece right. Uh, on they are playing he's... against Bangladesh. Yeah, and I, that... I don't know if Madhushanka is part of the test plans, is he? I'm not quite sure if he gets picked, but we'll find out. I think they had, they had mentioned specifically that they're releasing Patirana and Tishana. Yeah, they will as be well available. as Chamira and Hasranga. So, those yeah. four players, they said, are available entirely. So, I'm not quite sure what that means for Madhushanka. He silenced to the Wankhede in the World Cup when yeah. he got Rohit Sharma. Sharma. Yeah. First yeah. ball or second ball? Second ball, yes. Second ball. No, and thinking about that, no, they'll all be rooting for him. Think about if, what... if Rohit Sharma is still playing with him <laughs> when it when it eventually comes to the first game of the season. Yes, Dustin. No, no, but just to take on, on Wasim's point that Wankade pitch has been offering quite a bit to the seamers of late. Yes. And especially someone like Kotsa will get a bit of, say, extra bounce. Madhushanka might get some swing. Yeah. So they're buying very smartly for their home ground also. Yeah, and I think also it's it's you can see what's happening here. Berendorf is there, Berendorf has a great new ball record. But could be hit and miss after that. Mm. So between Berendorf and he also has an injury history. So Madhushanka, young player on the rise, Berendorf and Madhushanka are pretty much similar mm. skill set. So the role clarity will be there, I guess, for yeah. him, which is something that the Mumbai Indians from two seasons back were missing. They weren't quite sure what, say, Daniel Sam's role was mm. or whether it was Meredith or other players. They really did struggle. Now there seems to be a, a good uh, a clarity in their, yeah. their auction strategy too. Yeah, I think Berendorf and probably Kodzia will probably start uh, and they've got Madhwal. So, Bumra and Madhwal probably are the death bowlers and yeah. these guys can bowl with the new ball and in the middle overs. So, yeah, I think they've got the strategy right. Yeah, as, as, as it turns out, I guess they've, they've regretted gambling now in auctions. Jofra Archer was a gamble and it did not pay off and now with 
even the acquisition of Hardik is again willing to get, let go of the auction, not gamble, secure a premier player, and now add to your squad with uh, two players who you know are young, who will be fit and should be available and fit for most of your season. Right. There you have it for the Mumbai Indians. Uh, Jaydev Unatkat, good to see him get another franchise. He's going to go to the Sunrisers, who have a lot of Indian bowling options, Vasim. Jaydev Unatkat adds to that. Nice to see him go for 1.6 crore to Sunrisers. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, that Sunrisers are going for mm. so many fast bowlers. They've already got so many Indian backup, uh, you know, with Bhuvi, Umran, Natrajan. Yeah. Uh, and they have again picked up a fast bowler. So, really surprised, but yeah, happy for... You know, Jaydev Unatkat, he adds value, you know. Yeah. Interesting, so there, are, there, are, there is a need for Indian fast bowlers and not a lot of options. So, you just look at the Sunrisers team, we'll make Wasim Jafar's point. Now, Umran fell out of favour. Of course, new management this year, we'd hope new fortunes, but he's also seemed to have fallen out of favour uh, with his India prospects. Some work that still needs to be done. Shashank, I wonder if you can give me the latest here, because where Umran Malik stands today may very well be part of your decision-making on whether you want, say, more Indian seamers and they've, uh, they've gotten Jaydev Unatkat have the Sunrisers. Yeah, so Jaydev Unatkar at 1.8 crores, a very good buy. I mean, you won't call it a steal, but yeah, uh, considering the fact that he went for 50 lakhs to LSG and then he had one uh, uneventful stint with Mumbai, I think it's still a good buy considering the budget that Sunrisers had. What Jaydev Unatkar brings to the table is, of, of course, a lot of experience uh, and calmness. I mean, that's one uh, aspect of his game that he hasn't always been able to exhibit in the T20 format. Mm. He's a very, very good red ball bowler, very good 50-over bowler. But in T20 cricket, after all these years, that's one area that he's really kind of struggled with. But uh, they also see him as a death bowling option. Uh, there, are, there were a couple of games uh, over the last two seasons where he uh, couldn't quite make an impact in the death overs. There's one game against Chennai Super Kings yes. where Dhoni yeah. went about 16 in the last three or four balls to win them. So there has been a few issues with him in the death overs. But I think overall, as a package, I think Jaydev Unatkat will offer them a good backup probably for Natarajan, considering Natarajan is also injury-prone and may or may not give them 14 games in a season. Mm. He can also bat a bit, right, Unatkat, which is important because if now maybe Janssen doesn't get into the side because you have Cummins and then you have Unatkat and Cummins coming in at maybe 8 or 9 in some games, giving you some deep batting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, I think everyone wants a little break and some lunch now because the next set of spinners has just flown by. <laughs> but I'm wondering whether there would have been at least some interest shown for someone like Tabresh Shamsi, so Mujibur Rahman, who has had uh, IPL interest in the past, Ish Sodhi, Akil Hossein have all gone by with no interest at all. Uh, Wasim, do you see that as a surprise? Could any of these names come back later? Or would you have been tempted to look at any one of these players? Hasaranga went at a steal, the others nobody is even interested in. So clearly the overseas spinner is not in demand. Yeah, I mean, Tabresh Shamsi, uh, mm. you know, he's, he's done so well for South Africa. Adil Rashid, even, uh, you know, uh, the other seamers, each Saudi as well. Yeah, uh, you know, he's Mujib been there. Really Mujib's really. batting seems to have improved as well. And Mujib, I mean, yeah. playing... Uh, you know, on wickets uh, like Delhi or Chennai, you know, you consider that uh, he's, he's added something to his armory, he swings the ball when he bowls with the with the new ball. So, surprised that, uh, you know, no interest there. Mm. I had a hunch that RCB may try and just pick up a, you know, a steam. Cheap Mujib. spinner. Yeah, yeah, cheap spinner, but mm. who's, some, who's come along pretty well over the last couple of years, but uh, they didn't even raise the paddle. So, so yeah, that's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, maybe they're just waiting for some of the uncapped players now and then they'll come yeah, back yeah, to... Yeah, that's all I can, I can speculate that yeah. Yeah. they're yeah, expecting... Possibly, yeah. They don't know the kind of bidding wars that'll come <laughs> for the uncapped players. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's time to just re recap the squads. Uh, most of the heavy lifting done in terms of high-profile names. Who is to say the auction will not uh, give us more to discuss? But the headline starts from uh, from from a faraway land in Australia, where Pat Cummins and Mitchell Starks have added significantly to perhaps the Australian GDP and the economy. They've managed to nick 40-plus crore of uh, IPL wages uh, for uh, between the two of them. Cummins to the Sunrisers, joining Daniel Vittori, the assistant coach for the World Cup winning side, and Mitchell Stark to KKR, a franchise that previously uh, were in interested in him and then that's where the story ended for Mitchell Stark's IPL career. Gautam Gambhir returning to KKR and having an impact immediately at the auction table, grabbing headlines, IPL's most expensive buy. So let's start with Stark. Uh, just get a quick recap on that. So they've picked up uh, Mitchell Stark um, as well as um, KS Bharat as an Indian keeping option, but they still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yep. Will, will we see and them? Sa Chetan Sakarya. Chetan Sakarya. Yeah, they've they've got some work to do in the batting. The middle order is still slightly iffy, 
I mean, Rinku Singh's obviously come along leaps and bounds with the last one year. But uh, they were a little unhappy last year in that middle order, kept chopping, changing, chopping, changing. So, uh, I think role clarity will be important. Where Andre Russell bats is also another uh, aspect that they'll have to work through later on in the uh, once the auction dust settles because he's been, you know, very uncertain. He's some games he's been batting at six, some games he's been batting at seven. So the entry point hasn't been defined. So I think if they can address those issues after the auction, uh, they look pretty set. Mm, yeah, I mean, they're still, they're, they're, they've paid a huge chunk of their pending salary have KKR, but they will still now have to do some work and try and pick up uh, players at a bargain price. Lots of boxes still to fill for the Knight Riders. We'll see how things go when the next part of the auction comes in. Sunrisers have been very busy. They started early. They wanted most of their business done before the madness that was expected from Stark came through and therefore they went to Pat Cummins, perhaps surprised that we were surprised with, given that uh, we didn't expect Pat Cummins to breach the 20 crore mark with Hasaranga at 1.5 crore. Vasim Jafar is that the like looking likely and likely to be the steal of mm. the auction. Uh, they've also added Jaydev Unatkar and a World Cup winner in Travis Head. So that is their full complement of overseas players completed. But your thoughts on the Hyderabad uh, shopping so far? They've done well. I think, uh, you know, instead of, I mean, they've got Pat Cummins, but if, if that bowling attack had Mitchell Stark, you know, if they could spend that much money on Pat Cummins, who's, who's little, uh, haven't got the same numbers that he has in test or maybe one day, uh, if they'd gone for Mitch Stark, I think that, that team looked really solid there. All right, there's Hyderabad for you. Uh, let's keep going uh, around the table. Mumbai Indians have smartly bought some good buys over here. Uh, they picked up uh, Jarul Kutsia and they picked up Dilshan Madhushanka. They tried for Mitchell Stark. It was wishful, wasn't it, Dustin? It was wishful thinking. It was a dream that was never going to be realized. But you've remarked that this is sound, solid auction buying from a team that didn't have a lot of balance plus going into it. Yeah, they had, a, they had a strong squad anyway. So, it was really about just finding one or two players who could even just be backup. So, I think Kodze in particular is a really good buy. I just have a feeling about Cheral Kodze. Short bowling to some of the Indian domestic batters, I think, could really work for him. All right, well done. And now we know that you're, gonna, you, you're legally allowed one more short ball in the terms of the bouncer rule being tweaked for the next IPL. That could be... Vital as well. Let's look at the Super Kings, shall we? They have also been uh, surprising us. They made some headlines with the acquisition of Daryl Mitchell. Such a Super Kings thing to do. Everyone was looking at Stark and potentially uh, Cummins or uh, Harshal Patel, Shardul Thakur. Shardul does return, but uh, at a much more subsidized rate for the Super Kings. Rachin Ravindra has been picked up, which we have to wait and see what what that was a sign of, given that they have Jadeja in that role, they have uh, Santner. Mitch Santner in that role. Of course, Ravindra can bat at the top of the order, but that's a bit crowded with Guy Quad and Conway and Ajinkya Rahane. So we'll wait and see. Daryl Mitchell is the story there, Shashank. But it's anybody's guess what CSK have in, have in their plans. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it, it's, it's just probably a peek into what's to expect uh, with Chennai Super Kings going forward. Uh, very rarely have you seen them look at just one season in isolation. So it's entirely possible that they see this uh, to be a bit of a transition and see how Daryl Mitchell goes in that role and then go uh, go forward uh, ahead of the mega auction. So, uh, well-deserved uh, payday for uh, Daryl Mitchell. He's made all the right noises over the last couple of months. And, uh, yeah, I don't think he would have expected 14. None of us did. Uh, but it's still, I mean, th those are the auction dynamics there that uh, completely at play with the, the d demand and supply with the overseas and the skill sets that they're all after. So... Yeah, uh, it's a very, very good buy, irrespective of the auction price in the end. Very well. The Titans, the team that just pipped, uh, or that just uh, pipped for uh, for top spot last time from CSK in the final, thrilling final. Auction dynamics could have very well come in for them. At 25 crore, could they have gone another 25 lakhs? Who knows if the if the KKR paddle would have been lifted one more time, Wasim Jafar. As it turns out, it's just Omar Zai and Umesh Yadav. You throw Mitchell Stark in there and you think, wow, what a bowling attack that is with Rashid Khan and Mohamed Shami and uh, and potentially Noor Emma. Then if he grows into the bowler, he could be. But it's not to be. What are they still looking for? Are they still looking to fill the overseas uh, seamer slot? They probably will yeah, go for another fast bowler with, with the uh, another auction coming up. Uh, but yeah, Mitchell Stark in that uh, team would have strengthened their side. Uh, they had the purse. Uh, but all in all, I think it's still a, still a very good team. Uh, you know, not much to do. 
So I th I think you know Umar Zai was was a steal for them. Mm. Thirty one point eight five crores still left for GT in the auction. How much? Thirty one point eight five crores still left. Let's just say now whichever player they want, they will get. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Uh, uh, RCB would all, almost predicted this this panic to be triggered, which is why they went all out for Alzari Joseph, who the Titans would be thinking now, could we have kept him? Could we have potentially brokered some kind of deal where uh, Joseph stays at 2.8 crore? Because it's been a huge payday for uh, the West Indian fast bowler in excess of 11 crore just before the madness from Stark came. I say huge, and suddenly 11 is like such a small number today. <laughs> but they needed someone dusted in there. Uh, Bangalore need bowlers. They've at least got Alzari Joseph in it. Still work to do. Yeah, and I think Bangalore was smart because they probably realized that Mitch Stark is going to go for that huge amount. So they said, let's just get Joseph, put him in the bank because they probably wouldn't have been able to compete for Stark mm -hmm. considering how much he went for. And now they still have a bit of money where they could go for a Shah Rukh Khan. They can look for a couple of other yes. Indian uncapped players maybe. So they've kept a little bit in the bank and they've got one good overseas fast bowler. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we weren't really expecting a lot of work to be done by teams like Lucknow, Delhi, but just let's have a look at what they've been busy with. Uh, interesting that the Lucknow Super Giants uh, were, 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 were entering enough of these auctions, uh, enough of these bids, but they end up only taking Shiva Mavi at a price that Shashank Kishore, having watched Shiva Mavi's uh, recent few months and his injury track record, you think is not quite adding up right now. Not adding up right now, but again, they didn't have much to shop for anyway, so I think it's a case of them probably looking at him as a backup to begin with and then see as the season progresses if he you know if he's fit in time then they can take a call then so yeah. i think it's just a case of them ensuring that one backup position by having somebody who's pretty vulnerable so that mm -hmm. may or may not make sense straight away but i think uh, uh 6.4 slightly overpriced but they have somebody in yeah. the bank that they can look at yeah. yeah yeah delhi capitals have been busy haven't they their captain is present at the auction table lifting the paddle with his right hand just showing us that he's getting stronger and stronger but rishabh pant's return is in itself as good as a new signing if indeed that is how it eventualizes for the capitals otherwise wasim jafar harry brook at 4 crore could very well be along with hasaranga one of the steel deals of the auction and tristan stubbs picked up as a reserve keeping option with all the uncertainty surrounding their keepers, they let go Phil Salt. What have you made of Delhi? They've been interested in a few more players, but they haven't quite been willing to spend. They still have a decent balance purse too, as things stand. Yeah, I think Harry Brook, again, uh, was a very good buy. Tristan Stubbs, uh, he'll probably be a backup. Uh, they, they probably, uh, you know, need to fill in, you know, a couple more positions, uh, but I think they'll be happy uh, getting Harry Brook at that price. Uh, he probably would have been expected to go for a lot more, I would say. Mm. All right. Well, uh, this is where uh, we can just have uh, a quick look at how much money is still left to be spent uh, at the auction. You can follow that on the live blog for ESPN Greek Info, and it's there for you. Well, I think if you add all those numbers after Gujarat, it still won't come to 31.8, right? So <coughs> that is how much money the Titans still have. So Delhi uh, have 24.45, I think. Yeah, That's right. So, so Hyderabad, most of the business is done. They'll pick up some Indian players, you think. Delhi are still interested here. So Delhi, keep an eye out. So Delhi and Titans have a lot of money. Bangalore uh, in there as well with some spots to fill. Mumbai have done some smart buying. Hmm. And that is where uh, the auction stands. Uh, watch out for some uncapped players. That might very well have a story to tell. We'll have Shashank Jishore with us, Wasim Jafar. Uh, and the rest of the ESPN Cricket Foot team, Dustin Salgado too. Uh, and uh, stay with us right through on ESPN Cricket for Auction Day. It's time now to go to Karthik Iyer before we take a break because Mumbai have been smart. How are the Mumbai fans feeling? Karthik will tell us more. This is the newest rivalry in the IPL. We, were, we have our titan, Karan Chug. We have Zenath, part of the Paltan. But why is this so, so big these days? It's because Hardik Pandya, Karan's captain for two years, went from here to here. He now captains Zenats Paltan, Zenats Mumbai Indians. And that's why they don't like each other. Zenat? Yes, Mumbai Indian is more stronger with Hardik Pandya's comeback. And of course, we are the serial winner. I think all I need to say is that our team played twice. The first time they won, and the second time they reached the final. So Hardik Pandya or not, we are still winning. So who? There you go. So who are you going for? The serial winners, Mumbai Indians, 
are the newbies on the block. The two-time finalists, one-time champions, Gujarat Titans. Back to you, Ronak. Interesting. Interesting. Thanks, Karthik. Thanks for that, guys. Keep them apart. Uh, for now, it seems like uh, Hardik Pandya and the Gujarat Titans are still content. Lots of money still left. And let's see how they spend it. Uncapped players coming up. And then we might be in for some stories even when the accelerated round begins. So we'll take a short break now. And we look forward to your company as ESPN. Looking for Auction Day will resume very shortly.